right here. And Uh, okay. So I know that is going to be late. I know that that is going to be late. And have we heard anything about Eric? No. Eric will be here. He will not. Will not be here. Yeah. Okay. In other words, any of the members. That are going to be here are going to be here live. So that spares me the remote script thing. So, without further ado, welcome everyone to this meeting of the Nantucket Historic District Commission. Um, it's Tuesday, June 20th, and it's uh, four minutes after four. Um, just for the record, with us at the moment. Val Oliver, Diane Coons, myself, Ray Cole, Stephen Welsh, uh, Connie Patton. Um, okay, for the two of you in the room, I hope you're listening well. Uh, please mute phones and if you want to record any portion of tonight's session, let us know. Really. Hello. All right. So, and because we're all live, uh, things can be done via voice for the mic. Uh, first item, should we uh, approve uh, today's agenda? So moved. There it is. Stephen has made a motion to approve today's agenda. And there are five of us at the table. So until someone else shows up, it's going to be the five of us voting and everything. Uh, so on Stephen's motion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are. Okay. Um, Billy, were you going to do the sign thing for us? No. Oh, as mayors. That would be miss, me, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the sign council met this morning, and per the recommendations, they were um, to approve Numbers one through four. Approve one through four. Straight up. Straight up. That was your motion, Diane? Okay. Diane has made a motion to approve signs one through four. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. Um, and then how about our remaining fifth sign? Hold for revisions. Hold for revisions. So moved. All right. That was Diane, right? Uh, Diane's motion is to hold sign number five uh, for revisions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion okay. to approve consents. Well, let's see here. I'm going to have to recuse. Okay. This is going to get a little on the complicated side. So I need to recuse. So you'd be chairing, Stephen. And I need to recuse. Yeah, I think we're good. Figured. So Val and I are the only two people on that consent agenda that need to recuse, it would appear, <clears throat> right? I believe so. Um, okay, you so get a motion to approve consents? Motion to approve consents. On uh, Connie's motion, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Back all right, Mr. Chair. Consents go. Now, let me see. I'm out of this one. You're out of it? Mm -hmm. Just seeing if I am. I, I I don't think so. It was what I wanted to ask. Oh, go ahead, Diane. Uh, where it's that one thirty four Surfside Road with the solar panel. Thirty four. Yeah, thirty four. Thirty four Surfside Road. So yes. Ten. Yeah. I just would like to. The do do we want to faces uh if it faces west it will be visible here let's let's see how we can handle this okay. Stephen do you want to um you reviewed it so can you address her question sure um thanks it's approvable based upon the conditions that were added. 
Do, uh, is that sufficient, Diane, or would you like to see, uh, would you like us to pull us out of the- I don't mind if Diane wants to pull it, certainly. Okay. So why don't we move the rest of these and then we can just return to that. And if it gets sticky, then we'll, we'll request. I just wanted to know how it addressed the street. Well, let's see. I, I think we just pull it. Yeah. So it's let's let's move stuff. the rest of the consent with conditions. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Val is the only person who is going to be recused from this vote. So that would be Diane, myself, Stephen, and Connie. Um, did I hear a motion to approve all anything on uh consent with conditions, <clears throat> with the exception of number 10? You did. You did. That's Stephen's motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Now let's just turn for one moment to uh, number 34, uh, 10, number 34, Surfside Road, and see if uh, Diane can get clarification. So. Will you pull that? You guys are going to get it. Can I give you the lead in on this? Uh, is that addressed to me? Yeah. Yeah, please. That'd be great. So this one under conditions due to the limitation on its visibility being angle relative to the street and the height and the pitch of the roof. Okay. And the fact that the neighbor has the exact same installation on the exact same roof plane. Oh, oh well, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Which is in the packet if you preview it. Yeah. Um, I'm still trying to get to my agendas in minutes. It says so, page not found. Let me see. We'll get it online. Uh, what did you just say, Val? Previously, you could link to these, <laughs> um, but the I just tried, and it says uh, page not found. It's up on the screen. There we go. Okay, excellent. Okay, so Diane. Yes. Can you there we are. Go to today's thing. Mine open, Val. Huh. It was on my phone. We'll try it over So here. that photo is of the neighbor. Yeah, that's the neighbor's installation directly uh, to the west. Well, actually, to the I think so. South. South, yeah. <laughs> and it's a very similar structure in that it's got a primary mass and a secondary mass with a shed roof on the front, of, with a uh, small shed on the front, which you're seeing on the west elevation. So that's the west elevation of the structure where the solar is proposed. Mm -hmm. And then if you scroll down, if you go to the lower right corner, that's the rear of the house with this with the sec uh in the lower right corner, the secondary mass. Yep. Can we go back to the image on sheet seven? This is the neighboring structure, which has a similar shed at the front, the second story mass in the front, uh the as a primary mass with solar, and then the secondary with solar. Hmm. Well, actually, this is the proposed. The house next door is just like this. It's not the same design, but the massing is similar. Gotcha. Yeah, this is the one. Okay. Um, this one is also viewable from Bacchus Lane. Okay. Whereas the other house, the proposed that went on consent, is to the left of this behind the trees. Oh, the, the, the precedent one is also viewable from Bacchus. Yes, yeah, correct. Yeah. So what do you think, Diane? Well, I, I don't know. If it's there, there's already one there that's just like it. I hope there aren't any more. So we have a whole fleet of solar panels. Because Bacchus is, is a usable street, but let's. Uh... It's interesting because my own view of this is that precedent, I don't find it all objectionable. Well, like, no, you know, if they're going to be done, like, that's yeah. kind of the way to do yeah. them. So I'm, I'm, I'm definitely yeah, good, good with this. Okay, so Thank can you. we move? Can we move this one? Yeah. Thank you. All right. Great. 
Uh, can somebody make a motion? Make a motion to approve and submit it. All right, that is that is just for the record on 34 Surfside Road. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, so that's our consent with conditions. Held for review, Town of Nantucket, 16 Broad. Anybody here to rep that? Uh, yep, Alex Yonich here from SMRT. Very good, thank you. You. Okay, go ahead. Is that oh, right? Yeah, so hold on one just a second. Myself, Diane, Abby, who is not yet with us, Jesse, oh, who's not yet with us. Now, Connie is with us. So at the moment, you got me, Diane. Connie, now you also have an alternate in the form of Val Oliver, which would bring you to four. Do you want, are you feel comfortable moving forward with this with four people? Um, if it's a quorum, I'm good with it. It is a quorum plus one, yes. Okay, sure. All right, Let's very good. It. Yeah. Um, so in, in summary, uh, we started talking about this last week. Um, we are proposing. Um, oh yeah. Okay. Good. I'm yeah, glad it yeah, comes yeah. back. Yeah. yeah. Um, do, do you need me to explain further, or is this relatively fresh? No, resume? I think that everyone is, you know, okay. certainly aware of this. Now, can you remind me of something? Mm -hmm. I think back when this was reviewed in earnest the last time, we had talked about doing some kind of a mock-up in situ. Is that something that's has, excuse me, has happened? So that was discussed. Um, and uh, the alternative that was accepted was uh, viewing in place uh, an installation of the same window um, at a different location. Um, right. Yes. And, and I think the, my communication with Holly and Esmeralda was that the, um, uh, members of the board would take a look at that current installation to see if that was sufficient in lieu of uh, purchasing a window, waiting two or three months to see it, and then having it On installed. Pleasant Street. Yeah, 11 Pleasant Street, I believe, is the address. Yeah. Okay, so listen, if things get a little... Um... If we get into the mire on this one with our four person board, you can always uh, have somebody, one of the people that's not here, mulling back in. So you're back to five. But shall we give this a try, folks? Everybody ready? All right. Um, okay. So anything further to say? Um, I think um, uh, uh, the window survey that was prepared by Linda Williams has been shared. Um, I think Holly may have distributed that. Um, that was one of the conditions we met, um, or that was posed to us when we met last time. Um, I believe also, uh, replacing the light fixtures was a condition of replacement, um, in kind. So we, we found the, the matching light fixture that's there currently at the entrances. Um, beyond that, I think the sticking point was, uh, going with an insulated uh, window versus a, a single glazed window. Um, so we were proposing a simulated divided light with a spacer bar um, as as an alternative to a single glazed window. Gotcha. Right. Okay, thanks. Holly, to you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so for the record, um, we all know that the town building was built in 1964 and as an infill it's a colonial revival time frame, um, and it's contributing towards our local national district. Uh, this is for alterations as well as the window replacements. Um, as mentioned, the window survey, um, I actually um, was uh, a part of that window survey um, inspection <laughs> for the window survey. Um, with our facilities manager for the town, as well as Linda Williams, um, taking a look at all these windows. Um, they're, they're definitely a, um, a mix mash of conditions, um, but the windows, window survey is in full, and I appreciate what, what went into that. 
um, their the request to have Green Mountain SDLs for energy efficiency, um, which would include no triple tracks as there. Um, and I think that um, appreciate the um, that the fact that the like kind repairs for the other um, requests are uh, appropriate and sensitive to the colonial revival structure. And I don't see any concerns with as proposed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Holly, thank you. Mickey, are you on board? I'm here, yes. All right. So for the record, um, yeah. this is Mickey Rowland. I'm representing the HSAG work group for, um, it used to be the, it's the former Historic Structures Advisory Board, which is myself, Angus McLeod, Jason Finger, Lucy Dillon, and Mary Bergman. So for, um, you know, as far as the windows go, that um, in terms of SDLs, I think that um, the Green Mountains are a pretty good choice. I have them on a building, our house here in Vermont, and they actually are, they're great windows. I think they're, they're pretty acceptable. The, the only concern we had was the, um, the, the light fixture chosen. Oh. Is that something that you could pull up on the screen? Maybe just the um, the photographs show because the photographs show the exist. There, look, yeah, there it is. Oh, <laughs> yeah, and that actually does match. If you can go down to the photograph, you'll see the the um, the the Broad Street entrance, and I, it looks like that fixture matches the Broad Street en entrance. But you know, I don't think that's it's, besides that. I'm not sure it's an appropriate light fixture. There it is, kind of second row, almost in the middle. There you go. Um, so we were just going to suggest there's a it's a pretty shallow recess. But there's not a lot of room for a projecting fixture, and even the the side doors, there may not even be enough room to swing the door under them. So we were just suggesting that you do a recessed light, um, maybe a but you know a flush recessed LED that that disappears. <clears throat> instead of a projecting fixture. So that's it, thanks. Okay, thanks a lot, Mickey. Yeah, interesting, that light. Um, <clears throat> anybody, Linda? Okay. Uh, I did the window survey for the town. Yes. Did you have any questions about the window survey? Holly, no. and, I, Holly and I spent the whole day in there. Uh, okay, well, uh, thanks, we'll see. Okay, because we can pretty much tell you I did every single window for your okay. thing. All right, great. Thanks, Linda. Thanks. Um, all right, board members, once again, myself, Diane, Connie, and Val. Are you on, um, when do you want to take comments from board members who aren't sitting and want to speak on this? Uh, I can do that right now, Stephen. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so I have concerns about this application. Um, Green Mountain SDL, wonderful window, so on and so forth. Um, it's only ever been approved, to my awareness, in very limited situations on second floors and um, on sides of structures. Uh, this structure is viewable on three sides. Number one, um, obviously an 1864 structure. Um, number two, the... Oh, I thought you said 1860. No, no, it's built much later. We don't have the packet. Uh, regardless of the fact, 1964, it's still a structure downtown. Um, so that's a concern. Um, also, the sill detail appears to be ruined in the elevations with a rounded pan and in the um, uh, details where it, it would appear to be an angular cut. And um, having a rounded, rounded pan sill on the structure is definitely not something that's representative of the historical norm. Whether this structure was built in 1964 or not, it's pretty much on the doorstep corner of the um, historic landmark as you get off the boat. So those are my concerns. Hey, Stephen, just clarification on that. I'm not seeing the rounded sill. On the elevation. On the so LFA, the not on the detail. So this oh, is I think that's already there. That's scooped out. Um, all right. So what Stephen is calling attention to? 
Yeah, those are rounded holes. The, no, 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 wait. No, no. The sills have a cutout. Yes. But my recollection was that that's a straight cut on the bottom. Yes, don't shake your head. No, that's what it is. And on the sides, it's an angular cut versus having it be scooped, like an ice cream scoop, carved out and a quarter round. Is there is everyone following which no no I will I will say this much. Do we have an image of it? I don't believe that the proposal is to do anything with the sills, the the stone sills that are in place. Actually, I'm not sure whether they're are they stone or are they poured concrete? No, they're they're, they're I believe they're stone. Stone. Yeah. So yeah, so they do look like granite. Whether they're curved or faceted, angled. It's only the wood portion above. It's that. only the wood That's sash itself, yeah, and and the and the jam. So correct. The no, that was my question. Like correct. That, that's going to stay just the way it is. The wood part. Correct. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. The reason why we looked at all the other windows, we wanted obviously a Nantucket profile, which these don't have. But what we wanted to do, the new ones are going to have the Nantucket profile, which is what Green Mountain does really well, plus the screen. We didn't want to do triple tracks. And because the first floor windows are so high off the ground because of the way it's constructed and further from the sidewalk, it's going to be impossible to tell. But it also eliminates the need for those triple tracks because most of the triple tracks on this building don't function. Um, a lot of them have been destroyed because of the air conditioning units that have been put in during the summer. And we didn't want triple tracks on the structure. We wanted it to have a wood window, a double pane wood window for thermal because it, the building is bleeding heat and whatever coldness is in the building because these none of these windows fit well and none of the uh, storms fit well. That's why we wanted to eliminate the triple tracks in favor of just screens and have them, and the screens are gonna be in front of the windows and have the windows be a nice wood window with a double glaze for a whole host of reasons. Very good. Thanks, Linda. Um, okay, Stephen, thank you for your comments. If, if Is there anyone else other than the board members sitting who would like to speak on this application? I'll turn it over to the board. Um, okay, who would like to begin? Oh, you know what, folks? Jesse, sorry, when did you come in? Um, it's like just now, did you miss the the you missed the conversation? Okay, so I'm gonna have to leave you off of this one. But so, um, who would like to begin the conversation? Well, I'll begin. To... All right, Diane, that yeah. sounds fine. I think that whatever the problems are, they are put up with it on the face. This is our town building. It's what people see when they come off. What they expect to see is a building that sort of fits in. And I think that we have to go with uh, TDLs, not SDLs, particularly on Broad Street and on um, Federal. That they have them on the second floor, they're set back more, and they wouldn't be so obvious. But going up to the two front doors, I think that the windows should be the older PDL. They can put plastic in on the inside if they have a problem with the windows leaking, but it won't be on the outside. Mr. Chair. Uh, yes. Just to follow up on the doors themselves, the doors and the flanking side lights are not being changed. Okay. Yes. Only the windows themselves. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Diane, thank you. Val, you ready? Nope. Not ready. Okay. Connie. I'm not sure about the windows. I, I understand for an economic reason why that makes sense to me. Um, and it sounds like they're, they would be appropriate. I am curious about the light though. Um, uh, if they could do a recess light, that would be much nicer than just replacing in kind, because that's kind of um, a strange little light fixture. Um, yeah, I'm not sure about the windows. Okay. 
Connie, thank you. Uh, Val, are you ready now? Well, my initial instinct when I was an alternate on this was <clears throat> to have uh, the newer updated windows, the SDLs be on the second floor and the first floor to remain true divided light. Um, I think it's a bigger picture than just this building, because if we're going to make an exception for the town, then we better get ready to make yeah. that exception for everybody else who's in the OHD. In the past, what we've done is the windows that are least seen or, you know, not at human scale level um, are okay. And I could even see on the south elevation, everything past that shed to the right could be um, SDL, but I'm not comfortable making the exception for all of them unless we as a board come together with some sort of plan about that. Um, I know the energy code is changing significantly on existing buildings and it's gonna be a problem, so we should probably discuss it. Okay, Val, thank you. Um, my own view is I am pretty certain that uh, this will be the sort of thing that you just walk by and, and no one would ever notice unless they walked up and really, you know, severely scrutinized the windows. However, that doesn't seem to be the way the you know, majority of the current sitting board on this is going. So my suggestion, which I made the last time, is to literally take one of the windows out on the first floor in a very conspicuous spot and place uh, the new window in so that we can all see it in situ uh, so that it's we're not trying to compare it to a house on Pleasant Street. Um, but again, I, I think that uh, this is going to be a successful solution. We do have um, one of the first floor windows on, if you're standing on Broad Street to the right, one of those windows is in sort of an ancillary building behind the uh, elevator. Mm -hmm. So we could do that without impacting any of the uh, working offices. So we might be able to do that and have a uh, Green Mountain stick one in there. Okay. The, the point I'm trying to make is Avoid the whatever this, wherever the sample goes has to be a place where we can walk up to it and see it and really ex get the experience of it and whether it's going to be, you know, objectionable so uh can we move this um we can move this and by the way um sorry i forget alex alex yeah alex uh you may want to uh have one or two board members in because you know you're always kind of uh a little bit at a, a disadvantage when you have a four-person board sitting which is what you have right now so um i would encourage you to do that in the meantime but so uh is the is the motion to hold to to do a sample is that what i did i hear that i'll make that motion okay val has made that motion all those in favor say aye 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 any opposed there it goes thank you everybody um all right so now we're on to old business first item of which is 33 cliff road myself stephen as you all now know, Jesse has joined us. Very good, Jesse. Thank you. Connie, that's the board. Is Chip with us? Yes. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me okay? You, We can. All right. Great. Oh, thank you. Um, if I could share the screen, I would love to present uh, what we have to look at this evening. Okay. Um, I'm not able to share if it looks like you can't screen share. Yeah, perfect. All. Yeah. No, 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 we can. Um, okay. So this is an application for, uh, revisions, uh, additions and revisions at the guest house at 33 Cliff Road. You've seen a few, uh, variations of this. Uh, while I'm on the site plan, I want to point out the, the request of the board 
I'm going to back up for a second. Previous app, uh, proposals had the addition uh, in line with the front, which goes along Cliff Road. It was a request of the board to have the addition uh, not uh, co-planar with the front and, and to point it towards the rear. So if you look at the site plan, you can see in the site plan what we've done. Also, we've lowered it and pulled it back. So there are no proposed changes on the street side. This element is back behind the street side. Uh, this is north elevation is facing into the property. And the fenestration and dormers match exactly on the east elevation and on the west elevation. So the massing, fenestration, dormers all match existing. And I turn it over to the board for comments. Thank you. All right, Chip. Thanks. Holly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so for the record, this is a non-contributing structure from the Horchow family from the 1980s. There's actually an HTC survey on file. Uh, the changes to the existing uh, guest house um, seem a little odd, uh, specifically the south elevation, um, as this is the site that is going to be seen off of Cliff Road. Understand this is to keep the existing 12 over 12 roof pitch. Um, however, it is it seems a little extreme from this point of view. Uh, it would be helpful for the new addition to be um, subordinate in height, um, if at all possible, to eliminate that um, odd configuration. So those are my comments, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. Mickey, anything on this? Yeah, just a little bit. Um, so the, the south elevation is is sort of the awkward one. As you can imagine, um, those two sort of half gables meet at the ridge. And if you can try to picture how that's going to look when you look at an angle, the two ridges are at the same height. It's, it's just an, it's an odd overlap. That, I mean, ideally, this addition should really come off the back of the building as it does on the garage um, right next to it. Um, but I think that Holly's suggestion of lowering the ridge a couple of feet just really needs to be much more subordinate than equal as it's shown. So if the ridge is lowered a couple of feet, um, it would be a big improvement. That's that's it. Thanks. Mickey, thank you. Okay. Anyone else want to speak before I move it to the board? I I want to clarify the board because I'm not listed on the agenda, but I'm listed in the minutes. Oh. And you're not listed in the minutes, but you're listed on the agenda. Um I, I do remember sitting on this. Uh, okay. No, I could have missed a meeting. It's been a while since this has come in, right, yeah. Chip? That, that's correct, yes. Um, As listed, you guys are all here, so that's fine with me. At, a four-person board. Well, what, what uh, Val is saying, and maybe that's what you're corroborating is, it could be a five person. Board. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you're if you're in the minutes, I, could you sit on this? Yeah. All right. I, I would like that. Thank you. So who would like to start? I will. OK. Um, I agree with what's been said. I think that this addition meeting the peak in exactly the same spot with the same pitch is, is very unusual. And uh, I agree it should be subordinate. Okay, Val, thank you. Who's next? Connie, Jesse, Stephen? Oh, go ahead, Dan. Uh, actually, Diane, you are not on this. Stephen? Yeah, I agree with Val. I'm also concerned that it further obstructs the, the um, just the perception of gap. It all of a sudden becomes, you know, this structure has moved was widened out on the street. Uh, it's immediately adjacent to a neighbor that's right up on the street. And this starts to become, in a sense, infill of the streetscape. And we lose it, but for until privacy gates go up on these driveways, we lose the sense of depth that was historically Cliff Road with these uh, taller, stately mansions towards the rear uh, along the cliff. So. I'm just concerned about more structure and certainly concerned about it being atypical. Hmm. Okay. Stephen, thank you. 
Jesse Connie. I'll go. I, I have the same concerns about the south elevation. Um, that's that already been stated. All right. Very good. Thank you, Connie. Jesse. Um, yeah, I don't have much more to add. I think it's been all been said. Yeah. Thanks. Emotional. And I, 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 well, I just want to yeah. point one thing out. The way that this is set up, which was kind of, I think what Mickey was saying is, this is almost this corner where these two peaks intersect is going to look like you just cut a quarter away from a wedding cake, you know, and you removed right. it. It, it, it will serious. Well, wedding cake that's pointed, you know, if such a thing exists, but you know, like it's going to, it's going to have this gap that sort of peaks up on both sides. So I'm, you know, very concerned about that massing and it's going to be highly visible. So those are my concerns. And we about to move to for, uh, uh, yes, so okay. Stephen has moved for some revisions. Can I make, a, quick, can I make a quick comment before? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Go ahead. I, I, uh, Everyone is pretty consistent. What if I dropped it to a 10, which would drop it a couple of feet and removed the entire second floor program? So it was just a one story addition uh, with a 10 pitch, no dormers added and no second floor program. For me, that'd be a start, but I also want to note that it's, it's it may be material enough that it would conform to our three strikes and you're out rule. So as to say you would avoid that because you have made substantial changes. Well, um, I'm sorry, go ahead. I will I will just second what Stephen said in terms of it's it's a good start. Yeah. Um now Stephen's motion. Oh, I already voted. We already voted it. Okay, so there you are. There you are, Chip. Okay. Uh, you do have one more coming up. And that's gonna bring us out. Kendrick, I, I mean, um, oh, all right. Let's 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 go back. Uh, so Stephen's motion was to hold for revisions. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Got it. All right, that's official. Now to Kendrick, myself, Stephen, Abby, who's still not with us, Diane, Val. And uh, we could pull in, uh, well, Jesse. He's one of the three alternates. You want to sit on this, Jesse? Sure. All right. There we go. Um, Chip? Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Chip Webster here on behalf of the applicant. Um, so at the last week when uh, you viewed it, I had some supplemental information showing the history of the approvals on this, which... Uh, I did submit the next day, but I didn't see it in the PDF. Did you receive that? It's, it's, it shows the three approvals and the minutes for each of those uh, sort of in sequence as a timeline. Yeah, I was looking at it. I was having a tough time making that detail. You, I'm sorry, Steve. I don't know if your mic is on. I said, uh, I, I, said I actually viewed it, Chip, and I, I'm... I, if I had the right one, I was, it was, I was having a tough time making heads or tails of it. It, it seems to be what we received the prior time. Is there a separate no. page that I missed? Yes, yes. Okay, so you did receive it. So you have it up right now. So what there, there are three approvals that have happened on this structure. And so this is a, is a timeline of all three. So this one has each approval with the associated minutes to the right. So this was the, uh, uh, you had asked even uh, for more history on the uh, approval on this, right? That's why I put together the entire timeline. So this was approval number one and the associated minutes. If you scroll down, um, when the house was framed, oh. we came we came back for, uh, oh, this is a, keep going. This, that's the same approval reduced. All right, so then we, when the house was framed, we came back and asked for this uh, amendment to the fenestration on the rear. And this is the associated uh, minutes and that it was put on consent. Um, and then if you go to the next one, and these are the associated drawings for that, 
This is the most recent one, which was uh, for the third floor uh, elements, and it was also put on consent. Um, so there was so what we're actually the only thing that we're asking for tonight. If you keep if you keep going, I believe it has. Uh, that's the re reduction for that. If you keep going to the south elevation, that's the north. There we go, right there. So this is a uh, as built. Uh, so the only thing that we're asking for tonight is that railing on the third floor, which originally had, uh, I believe it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven uh newel posts, and it was constructed with eight. So it's the exact same detail and everything like that. The spacing of the newels is different. So that's the only element that we are looking at this evening. Uh, thank you. Okay. Uh, anybody want to speak on this before it goes to the uh, board members? I know. Okay, I think I'm I am going to turn this over to the board now. Once again, myself, Stephen, Diane, Val, Jesse. Who would like to begin <clears throat> this discussion? I can. Uh, that was you, Jesse. Yes. Yeah, thanks. Um, I understand this is a controversial project and has got a lot of people upset. Um, but if I'm looking at the application and what I am looking at, at is, um, is we're reducing the posts on a balcony from 11 to 8. Um, for that, um, I have no concerns um, with with what the application is. I'm not saying that, th that this is at all acceptable, what has happened I and mean, we may have made a mistake and by letting it get through on consent, but what I'm looking at here, I don't see any concerns. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. <clears throat> Who's next? I'll go. Thank you. Um, so the reason I asked for the history on this is because there's some question as to what information was represented when with respect to visibility, which led to this going on consent. Um, clearly, it is an intrusive, uh, I think that's a conservative way to put it, <laughs> uh, elevation and uh, currently facing a public way. Um, due to a filing naming error, the uh, commissioners have not seen the um, chip what you presented, which for me is the minimum level of comfort to review, to understand the um, kind of the, I don't know if I would say evolution of this application. Um, but in any event, yeah, I'm not comfortable proceeding with that. There's, It's not simply a matter of whether railing has changed. I think it's more involved than that. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for now. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, let's see, we have Val and Diane. Mm -hmm. I think if I'm to speak on just this particular situation with the railing, I agree with Jesse. Um, it's, yeah, that's all we can speak on. Is that it? Uh, if it's just about the railing, yeah. Okay. All right, Diane? That's <clears throat> All we're discussing on this elevation, right, is to clear floor railings. Theoretically, yeah. I actually, Mr. Chair. Yes. Just a point of order. Yes. Um, the minutes indicate the last topic that we just is this is this HDC twenty twenty three oh four eight three five eight. Is that what this one is? Uh, you mean the folder? Yeah. So I guess what I'm asking is this indicates a revision to the 2022 May 5th, number 6266. Uh, I'll say yes. Um, where is that leading? 
That's what I'm just trying to get information before I see. you determine the scope. That's all. Okay. So oh, that's all I needed to get. For gotcha. Gotcha. Let's see. So, uh, Val, we heard from you. And Diane, had you finished? No, I hadn't started. Okay. <laughs> I, well, I, I, I remember you saying, well, are we, is our discussion limited to just the railing? I have, I have my own thoughts on that, but uh, yeah. True, right? Yeah. No, I, I don't agree with that. I think that it's too heavy, too busy. Okay. Um, so my view is I wasn't around to have this original building approved. Uh, I never, ever would have approved okay. this. Um, and so I feel like the railing is going on top of something that's unapprovable. Uh, if the railing were on the ground all by itself, I could approve it. But it's because it's on top of a building that's, you know, goes against every standard that we have here at this organization, I'm uh, vehemently against this railing and everything that is underneath it to hold it up. Um, those are my comments. Hi, Abby. Uh, what would you folks, folks like to do with this, this application? Let me ask point of interest is sure. the technicality of approaching the whole problem. Uh, what phase are we at? If we make a statement about the, about the uh, fencing up there, then do we approach the rest of the building at some time? Or does, I don't know, trying to follow the whole... Uh, yeah, well, it's an interesting question. Billy, are you able to kind of bring the board up to speed in terms of the sign-offs and the mitigation type measures, that sort of thing? Yeah. Um, is that is that something you can field? For the record, Billy said, plenty of uh, land use specialist. I don't know that I can give much of a timeline. There was definitely some back and forth with myself, uh, Ray and Chip Webster regarding some planting. And I, I, I think any planting would be beneficial towards this. There are portions of that that paper road back there where, where the whole thing's visible. So I, I, I think anything to mitigate the sort of unadulterated sight of it would help. But beyond that, I don't, I don't have an answer so question mm -hmm. it doesn't sound like you have signed this off yet i have not it has not passed an inspection yet okay right so as far as far as i view this um it was represented as not being visible from a public way that turns out not to be true we all are aware of that fact um, and so now we have something that is visible, clearly visible from a public way. Board has um, recommended, insisted that uh, the objectionable features of this building be um, screened from a public way. So as far as I'm looking at this, it's open and you know, whether there's a rail approved to go on top of it or whether it stays just the way it is, I think it's still an open issue, at least for me. Um, hopefully that helps. I have a question. Yeah. Well, let, let me, let's let make sure something. Diane, have you finished? I, I have a question. I voted against when this came up a long time ago about planting trees. Yeah. I, I thought at that time it sort of the feeling was that we would review it again and come up with some more important revisions to the building than planting a few trees. I don't know how it stands, but I'm not against, I am against the railing. Yeah. Okay. And the building remaining as it is. Very good. Thank you, Val. Uh, this is a question for Chip. Um, picture number six, is that an actual picture chip or is that, um, like a, a, a photoshopped, um, model? Um, 
It's the one that has the top of right. Yeah. Yeah. That okay. So picture number six. Um, it look. I I don't know. I'd have to look at it more closely. It looks like it might be a model, but I don't know for certain. But I do want to, if I could, add a couple of things. Um, so the the own the the out this application is only for a change in the number of newels. Just so I just want to make that clear. Now I want to also elaborate a little bit more on what Billy said uh, that there was. Um, a conversation that he, Ray, and I were involved with by email where my client had offered to add additional landscaping. Um, he didn't feel that it was required because we had the approval, but to be a good neighbor, he offered that. He did a landscape plan. Uh, we reviewed it, i.e. Billy, Ray, and myself. Uh, there were comments to, uh, to and changes to a suggested the landscape plan, which my client made. And he still stands willing to to follow that landscape plan that has been provided. I just I just want to say that he uh, I don't believe, and I don't think he does either, that that is a requirement. But he's all he has offered to oh. do that. And if you wanted to roll that in, I imagine that would be fine. I speak. Thank you. Uh yeah. Thank you, Chip. Um, yeah. Let me just make sure, Val. Yeah, sure. Uh, has that answered? Yeah, I didn't know if I was looking at like a real life representation or if it was the Photoshop oh. representation because it is a little bit different from what we actually didn't on. really get an so, answer. So, Val, Val, that that image is a different part of the building. So that yeah. is Kendrick, mm -hmm. and the images that we're looking at right now are from. Uh, a path that is behind the house. So the 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 controversy is around the visibility from this path that runs uh, uh, apparently over a paper road that was was not constructed across the back of the house. So that's what the image is that we're looking at here. If that helps you any, Val. Okay, thanks, Stephen. Um, yeah, I agree with our chair with respect to <clears throat> the current situation and the reason for the emotion that was uh, made May 9th and approved was so that we would all have an opportunity to review the elevations in context of the staff dated minutes and kind of draw conclusions if we would based upon the record and then make a determination of how we wanted to proceed with the overall matter and this railing. I, I do not believe that they are mutually exclusive, again, based upon comments made by the chair. So I would suggest that Chip, we hold this, and um, till next Tuesday, we have the packet that you displayed earlier. We'll get the naming convention squared away so we can see it online, and um, we'll have had a chance to review the information by then. That sounds good, okay. and it sounds M like Mr. I Chairman, can I can I ask something? Who who's speaking? Cohen. This is Stephen Cohen. I represent the owner. Oh, um, yeah. I, I think that this is really out of line. And I appreciate that the board is disappointed in how this has turned out because you don't feel that the house is approvable if it had been, you know, handled differently. But the only thing in front of you is an as built for newel posts that they were approved as 11 and they're being reduced to eight. And this has been dragged on and on and on. And you're at you're trying to hold it up for unrelated items. Like if the board wants to take action about other things, it should take action about other things. But the only thing in front of you today is is eight newel posts instead of eleven posts newel posts approvable. And I think we all know that it's somewhat irrelevant. Um, it, there's nothing historically appropriate or inappropriate about the newel posts, the number of newel posts, or the or the placing of these newel posts. Um, I, I would really appreciate it if the board would approve the request in front of it. And if you'd like to do something else based on something else, it's that's something else, right? The, the, just holding up something so simple to go and look through the file again and again and again uh, has, you know, I don't understand what's going on here. The, the board okay. should be responding to the request in front of it. Okay. Thank you, Stephen. Can I respond to that? Uh, you may. So um, I just hate to beg to differ with the other Stephen, but 
Um, this has not been conclusively determined that the only thing in front of us is the rail. That was the purpose of ga gaining all the minutes and all the elevations in one location. I'm not suggesting that that won't be conclusively determined. However, it has not been. And there is reason given prior comments on this application with respect to visibility, and then there being visibility to for a member to have a certain level of discomfort before exercising that due diligence. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it would be appropriate for us to act on this. So again, my motion is to hold until next Tuesday, giving the commissioners who are sitting an opportunity to review the submission that was presented on the screen today. Okay, Stephen, thank you for the motion. All those in favor of Stephen's motion say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed to that motion? All right, very good. Thank you all. Now, you. Julie Jordan. There you are. And Julie, oh, let the record reflect that Abby has joined us. Hi. Hi. We're just finishing up. This is the last application of the evening. Um, so myself, Stephen, Abby, Diane, Connie. Okay, Julie. Um, I just wanted to start by reviewing what revisions I made to my plan. Um, this is, if you remember, a plan for a pool on at two Anne's Lane. <laughs> and the last time I presented, I just want to be clear that there was a lot of talk about moving the pool to other locations on the property. Um, and I would just say that I really did vet that and that there are a lot of large mature trees on the Anne's Lane side of the property and the sewer line comes in through there. And you can see in that bottom photo, there's a nice arbor and it shows all the mature trees from that side. If you want to zoom in on that, those two bottom photos are. So I did take that thought into consideration, both in the initial design process and in this second round of revisions. Um, so in turn, I made some changes to my pool. And I added um, two additional layers of planting between Sankety Road and the pool. I reduced the pool from 34 to by 14 to 26 by 13, holding the end closest to the residence so that it shrinks further from Sankety Road. And if you note on my um, landscape materials plan, which is the third plan. It's 44 feet from Sankety Road with a lot of vegetation between. Um, and I wanted to also point out that there are two additional pools on the same side of the street of Sankety Road between the old village of Sconset or Butterfly Lane and this one at Two Anne's Lane. Um, so I think I mitigated the view pretty well, um, and I'd be interested to hear your comments. Okay. Thank you, Julie. Uh, Holly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so for the record, the dwelling on the locus is a non-contributing 1994 structure. Um, before, there was a lot of concern about its um, proximity to Sankety Road, its visibility, um, and um, request for obviously pool equipment to be screened as well. I appreciate the changes um, and putting the pool in surround tucked in away from the front of the property. Um, there's even uh, vegetation screening um, from the adjacent neighbor who has his driveway right there. Um, and appreciate the additional native screening that's been added. I, I do think that um, what's been revised um, checks the boxes, even the pool equipment and everything is closed in and existing vegetation that's already on site is going to be retained and supplemented. So I have no further comments, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Is Rob on? He is not. He's not? No. Okay. Anyone else want to speak on this before it goes to the board? All right. Sounds like we're heading to the board. Who would like to begin? Can I ask a general question? Of course. So right above Anne's Lane, um, it looks like an apron, but I'm sure that's not a driveway looking right at the swimming pool. What is what does that indicate? 
the the curved line at the top above the this um whoops this is a bouncy chair um that thing there it is that up there that's the neighbor's driveway, that curve. This curve right yeah. here is um this right here. Oh. Oh. oh that's an existing, I think that is an existing apron. I don't think it's that big, but yeah, we probably got it off the survey. Existing Belgian block. That's the existing driveway. Mm -hmm. uh, no changes. Okay. There. So there's your answer. Um would you like to start or or should I, no, I just want to make make sure because I didn't bring my uh, pad, so I've got to work off the screen here. Um, and then beyond um, the pool is is with the rectangle with the thing in the box around it, the hardscaping. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I so I I think my problem is that it's on almost it's on a corner and. It, and Sorry, it's on a corner, and I think it could possibly be seen. And uh, I would say that it's a good 150 feet from that corner. Wait, uh, all right. Sorry, I know I should. So, I would be the corner of Sankety and Ann. Sankety and Ann, yeah. Because yeah. you're looking right down. The yeah. Thing there. Okay. Thank I'll you. go. Said it. Yes. Abby? Yeah. Okay, Diane. My thing. I think I may have asked you <coughs> last time was <clears throat> um, uh, I've looked at it again and again and and it, it doesn't I think the you can't just find it any more than it is and uh, so that I I take back question I was going to ask. <laughs> All right. Did you have comments though? No, I think it fits it spits in. I would just like, you know, I I say it all the time. I just like the the surrounding uh deck, bluestone deck to be a little bit more informal. You're in Wisconsin, which and on Sankey Road, and just not quite as formal. And and Lane Street is not. I'd like to see just a little more informal blue zoning around the pool, around the corners, or something. So it sort of fits in with with all your vegetation, which will be good. But it's okay. all natural. So that's my suggestion. Okay. Thanks for the feedback. Okay, Diane, thank you. Uh, Connie, Stephen. I'll go. Thank you, Stephen. I appreciate the changes. I have no concerns with what's been presented. Okay. Connie? Hmm. I appreciate the changes. I appreciate the screening and the vegetation. I still can't get over the location. Um, yeah, I'm just not sure that it, it's not going to be seen. Okay. You're concerned about potential visibility. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, everyone. My own view is, uh, I, I think Julie's done a pretty good job of screening this and also credit on the additional screening, the digital vegetation and the reduction in the size of the pool. Um, and of course, if this is to be approved, it would be approved with our usual stipulation. Uh, which, which we should append to every pool that, that we approved. Uh, so uh, I'm okay with this application. Um, Ray, may I make a comment? What? May I make a comment? Yeah. Um, I have a suggestion for those that do still feel like maybe it would be visible and it's something maybe I could do through staff is that I could do a slight berm in the vegetation that I'm going to plant on the inside where, because there's plenty of 
yardage to do that. So that would really eliminate ever being able to really see over that berm and see the actual pool in there. So if you just follow my hand, if this is the pool and you just kind of berm up the plantings that I'm going to put on the inside of the natural vegetation that's remaining, you could probably really make it extra unseen with some grading. You're, you're talking about the berm on the sanctity side. No, on my inside, because I want to leave all the vegetation. Well, that's no, no. The what I meant was on the vegetation you have inside the fence facing sanctity road. I even have vegetation like so you can kind of see that the vegetation that's existing, I'm adding to that from the inside and hedging. Okay. So I um, could berm. I, I guess. The berm wouldn't be on Anne's lane. No. It would be on the sanctity oh. side. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay, yeah. got Thanks it. for clarifying. That. Yeah. And I could do that as a revision. If you All right. Uh, and it would be shown in this. Make a motion. Stephen is about to make a motion, folks. Uh, berm the plantings. Um, slight berm of the through staff. Berm the plantings. Loosen up that patio a little mm -hmm. bit. That blue stone that Diane had commented. And not visible at the time of inspection or thereafter. Sounds good. And and those changes to the uh, plan with the loosening up would be through staff, Stephen? Yeah, that was the beginning. Of okay. Um, okay. There is Stephen's motion. Uh, on Stephen's motion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, hmm. Okay. So how many uh, are opposed to that motion? Just one abstention. Me too. Or uh, Oh. Yeah. Hang on. Nay. You're a nay, Diane. I said I. So oh, you were an I. Okay, and Connie. I'm going to abstain. Okay, so that motion does carry. It was three in favor, one abstention, and one opposed. Okay, so the motion does carry. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Um. All right. So now, Stephen is going to be chairing the next one, and that is at uh, Six Hickory Meadow. There we go. Okay. Um, so the board on this is uh, Abby, Diane, Val, Carrie is not here, and myself. So that's a four-person board. Do we have the applicant? No. Okay. So we'll hold off on this one. Okay. And are there any? Are there any members of the abutters that you're aware of? I don't know. I've got uh, a list of people here. Okay. So if you're here for Six Hickory Meadow, just so you understand the process, what we're doing is we're holding off till later in the meeting. Uh, the applicant's agent is en route to Nantucket. Oh, I'm sorry. What was that? Whoa. Actually, you got to my question. It's, it's going to be one of those, like if there were neighbors and they're holding it up yeah, kind I of thing. Wanna, but okay. Yeah. So you covered it. Um, all right. So. That concludes for the moment our old business. Now we're on to the new business of 620. First item of which is 21 Keel Lane. We have somebody to wrap. Thank you. Was that a yes on the rep? No. Okay. So we'll skip that for the moment. Do we have anybody on 89 Vestal? No. Hold Vestal for next week. Okay. It's Mark Godfrey here. Mr. Chair. He is, he actually emailed and said he was going to be able to make it this evening. Um, but he did email and, and say that um, his client wants to move forward with what they've proposed in the application, but they know that I'm opposed to it. It's an, kind of an as-built situation. Yeah. Um, so uh, either, either way, um, if you wanted to hold for his rep, we didn't explain that to him. So let me make sure I understand. The owner wants us to move forward without representation. The owner didn't say that, but it was Mark himself. He just couldn't uh, attend this evening. We said we would continue to Tuesday of next week if, if you all wouldn't open it up. Sorry, I'm having 
tough time hearing because my head cold. We explained through through email that typically you all don't open up an application if the applicant or agent is is not here. Correct. So, but he was will, basically wanted to say that the owner really wanted to have what they're asking for. So, but knowing that staff is in opposition, so, so we can continue till forward. Tuesday if well, if that's what the the pleasure of the board is. I'm sorry. Save it for Tuesday. Next Tuesday. I really think that that's the way to go. This was on my consent list and I looked at it and said, oh boy, I'm yes, not sure about this. It's definitely not consent. Uh, so I think that we should skip over that for rep, regardless of what Mark or anyone says. Um, is that a, mm -hmm. you, you're good? Okay. So no action taken on 11 mil, which brings us to 7A Bayberry Court. Anybody? Oh, it's going to be a mighty short goodness. meeting here. Let me go back. Um, to that was a nay, right? Nobody. Okay. Well, now Sandcastle. There we go. Seventy-six orange. This, I believe, is a dormer. Correct? Yeah. Yes, it is. Okay, hey, Robbie. Okay, we have Holly in over the edge of this house. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's an 1850s typical Nantucket. I was going to say 1830s. Uh, Robbie? Yes. Just FYI, regular board. We're all here. Okay. Okay, so the proposal is um, put a shed dormer up on the rear of the house uh there aren't any other exterior changes um oh there's a uh, there's a small access window into what became the uh mechanical room in the back we would like to add a little exterior um bulkhead in the back which is which is indicated on one of these drawings and I guess the best place for everyone to start would be on sheet five, which shows existing versus proposed. So um, if you all want to go to sheet five, you can see you can see all four elevations represented together and clearly see what our proposal is. that it, Robbie? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Thanks. Holly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, before I mention my comments, um, I believe Doug Gratton is actually here for the uh, 7A Bayberry Lane that we skipped. Um, I assume he's in for Andrew Gratton, who's the applicant. So I guess we can go back to that one after this application is removed. We should. Okay. okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so for my comments, um, again, this is a uh, circa 1850 typical Nantucket, two and a half story, four bay with a center ridge chimney and a side entry. And there is an HDC survey on file. Um, dormers are not original, obviously, to an 18th, 19th century Nantucket architecture, architecture, excuse me, especially a full shed dormer. With that said, they were added in the late 19th century and they were typically shed dormers. Uh, per, per page 72 of Building with Nantucket in Mind, dormer design and placement should not destroy the simplicity of the roof plane of Nantucket buildings. Full shed dormers that cover the main roof are not appropriate. Small shed dormers, preferable to a, um, a one large one. Um, on the rear, we check that off. 412 roof pitch, check that off. Um, it should be set back at least one foot from the building face and three foot from the um, each gable end and should come off the ridge as well, which um, it's right on the ridge. Um, so I uh, would recommend that this would, it should be a, a, a modest in proportion and resize the proposed dormer as, um, as, it, as it's previously shown. Did so, you say resize? So re resize it or break it down into two smaller ones. Gotcha. Thank okay. you, Mr. Chair. And I believe Mickey may have some comments. Yeah, Mickey, it's your turn. Yeah, I'm going to say something pretty similar to what Holly just said, that it's it's a pretty large dormer. 
it really covers the entire roof plane essentially. And it could, it would be, and it also, you know, in the past we've tried to um, not remove so many of the heavy timber, timber rafters in the attic by kind of designing the dormer around the rafter spacing. Yeah. So I could see, um, you know, a couple smaller dormers that respect to the, the current rafter layout um, and that would reduce the overall effect. Thank you. Hey, Mickey. Yeah. Um, I did review this prior and it looks like, it looks like in terms of the rafters, it's not the old rafters. They've got these new, have you, did you see those photos? I did. It looked like they were sistering old, old rafters. Oh, oh, maybe, maybe they are. Uh, okay. Yeah. I think you're right. I stand corrected. Okay. Thanks, Mickey. Okay. Um, Thank you. Who would like to begin? I could, I could go, I could say that I agree with um, what's been said so far that a, a, a <clears throat> Sort of, oh, yeah, yeah, look at those. Yeah, that's just shoring up the. Yeah, right. Yeah, something a little more modest. Okay. Short and sweet, thank you. Oh. All right, Diane. Uh, I think the, the dormer has to be made smaller all along. It's, it's not fitting in there. You've got the roof walk. And the rest of it, I would make it into two small, small dormers. I think the small, too small would be better than a, than a single one pulling your eye up to the roof. So that's what I think. Okay, Diane, thank you. Stephen, Val. Val, you want to go? <clears throat> so, uh, uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Sure. Robbie, given that it's on the corner with York Street is primarily my concern for how to downsize this. Um, it is going to be visible. It's not that visibility is in of itself an issue, but given the comments that were made earlier, I align with those <clears throat> in terms of size and proportion. If this were on the back of a, a structure that is not visible, the concern would be the um, you know preservation of the existing roof structure. But to some extent, that's really not our gig when it comes to a, a, a couple of small dormers. Um, I think at the very least, it's got to come down off the ridge, as was said, and uh, partition it into two two pieces. Okay, Stephen. Oh, and you. bury the uh, sorry, sorry uh, bury the header into the into the uh, top plate. You know as, what he means, right? As yep. on the front of the yep. house. No, actually, the front doesn't have it. No, I, I... so basically, take that header and eliminate a portion. Bring it right up so that it's it's part of the top plate. Integrate the casing in with the with the uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. freeze board. Yeah. yeah, that's what he's saying exactly. Yeah. All right, Stephen. Thank you, Val. <clears throat> um, I think just making it a little bit smaller, I'd be okay with it. And I think my proposal would be to perhaps move the if you're looking at the rear east, <clears throat> the right hand side closer to the leg of the roof walk and let the rest of it stay. So it just mitigates what's exact, what's on the street more or less. So that left window, Val, is that on the east elevation, basically bringing it in on that side? Yeah, it's not showing the window on the second floor, but if you look at the pictures, you're right, there's a window there behind that chimney. Mm -hmm. um, just moving it over closer to the leg of the roof walk and then leaving the rest of it the way it was, I would be fine with. Yeah, both of both of the both sides of that cheek come in three feet from from the outermost edge of the of the uh, main gable form. Can right. certainly move both sides in so it's symmetrical, easily enough. I could also split the dormer into two if you'd like that. However. You know, that's not going to give that center post of the uh, roof walk something to base on. And it would also require moving the the old hatch over so that. Uh, so that so that it would be usable. Um, also, if we brought it down off the ridge, the structure from the ridge is going to require taking out more of the original um, structure on the inside to restructure it to hide it off. 
Sorry. No, I'm sorry. I was just agreeing with you. You're structurally going to need to head down. Yeah. So I think, I think if the preference would be to bring it in further than three feet, we're certainly check the box on the one foot from the um, main fascia, um, as Holly noted. Um, I think that might be a good, good compromise. I don't think you need to do it both ways and make it symmetrical on the roof. It, it, if you just move one side over. Okay. Keep and and just FYI, I'm I'm with uh, Stephen on the moving further away from York Street part so that it's less imposing. The, the edge of the dormer? Yes. Is that what you mean? Okay. Yeah. So I'll make a motion. Okay. Stephen's going to make a motion. Uh, it's viewed from the east. Uh, decrease the width of the right side of the dormer by the width of that window to remove the window. Oh. Yeah, but I still need to give some base for that post, Steve. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Okay. I don't want to bring that right onto the edge because that's going to look awkward as well. No, if you if you de don't decrease it to where the window ends, decrease it by the width of the window. Oh, all right. Just, okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so you'll have a little a, bit of meat left. That'll give there. a foot or, foot yeah. or two there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is is that a through staff? Yeah, through staff. Okay. Can you just say it again so that they? Okay. Get so um, through staff, decrease the width of the dormer, as viewed from the east elevation, uh, on the right side by one window width. There it is. Okay. Which is going to be approximately another two and a half to three feet. Um, all those in favor of Stephen's motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Uh, so Diane's opposed. Okay. All right. So what we have is three in favor, one opposed, and one abstention. So the motion does carry. Okay. Robbie, thank you. Thank you all. Very much. Ben, your turn. I think you're going backwards, though. Oh, no, that's right. Yes. Okay. So, sorry. Um, let's see. 7A Bayberry Court. Yeah. Uh, now we have somebody to rep. So, let's move back to that one. I remember this thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, could you give your name for the record again? I, I, my I, apologies, I had problems with my microphone before, but now you can hear me. So Doug Gratton here representing Ack Attack, and we're asking to replace the front door at the uh, property at 7A Bayberry, Bayberry Court. Okay. Uh, so that's the only thing we're changing is the slab. We're not touching the side lights or anything else. We were in front of you before and proposed some Quite extensive changes, but that's not the case now. We just want to replace the slab um, with this uh, Thermo True entry door. Um, did, as, did you say just the door slab is being the changed? Slab, correct. Literally. Literally. Okay. As you can see there, what's as it's shown in red, we'd like to also paint it red, which you've applied for, but that's the only thing that we're changing. Gotcha. Okay, and it, it appears to be a 12 light door that you're correct. Yes, looking for. Okay, uh, all right, it's pretty straightforward. Um, do you have comments? Yes, sir, oh, I do. Thank you. Uh, so for the record, this structure within Bayberry Core is a circa 1988 non contributing structure. Um, from staff's perspective, not sure about the red proposed, I don't believe it's within your color palette. Um, the Therma True door um, obviously is something that you see for um, structures of this nature. However, uh, I, I believe a nine light with a um, two panel would be more appropriate versus what's being proposed. Um, typically, they're either six or yes. nine lights um, versus what's being proposed here. Uh, I did want to mention, if you look at this photo that's provided in front of you, um, 
the existing that trim that's around the fan light is actually green um, and they notate that they're wanting to have it white, but this application is not for that. Um, I do think that's a little confusing to have just one, you know, th this element that they're proposing, but they're not including it with their application. So obviously um, from staff's perspective, white would be appropriate. Um, so those are my comments, Mr. Chair. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Holly. Anybody else want to speak? Otherwise, it goes to the board, regular board. Sorry, can I ask a question to Holly? Yeah. Just to clarify, yeah. uh, you, the, when you were talking about the green, were you talking about that? The fan. Yeah. yeah. So okay. around the fan light, that large trim band is actually green as stands right now. Mm -hmm. um, but they're wanting to change it to white, but that's not included on this application. At least that's not what they included on their COA. And I just wanted to point that out to the commission because technically this is a little mm. misconceiving. And if you do approve a green or a red with a green, um, <laughs> I think Christmas. So anyway. Uh, I have a question. Go ahead, Stephen. Uh, through to the applicant. Is this the new location of the Christmas tree shop? No, it's not. It's Christie's. Okay. Real so thing. being that it is not, um, can you address the colored uh, difference as shown in what's presented versus what's there? And what your intentions are, please. Well, our intention was to do this both, but we were we were told this meeting was going to be out two weeks, but we got an email today stating that we'd be on at four o'clock. So here we are trying to get this approved so we can get our new door installed. The one that is there now is not watertight, and we have a new uh, hardwood floor going down, and as it rains, water comes in. So we're trying to uh, secure the property and. Um, you know, yes, we will be submitting an application to turn that uh, green stripe to white um, on the building. Hopefully, well, it would make it would make sense just to roll them together. But uh, Stephen, was that where you're going? Yeah, you've addressed it. Yeah. Okay. So, look, if if you're, why don't we just include this? Yeah. And we can do that through the motion to include change in the green trim on the fan light to white. It's is the around the fan that's going to be, it's green and that's, we want to make white. So yes, that's what we'd like to do. Gotcha. And, and so to the color though, um, I would agree that like, this is a rather bright red. We do have a uh, uh, list of approval colors, which includes, I believe two reds, yeah. right? Mike, right on that one. Front door reds, cottage red and. Cottage red. Yeah. So, uh, if you wanted to approve with one of your approved reds, I would be in favor of that. And that would be fine with me if we could do it that way. I'm certainly on board with that. Okay. All right. Good to know. Okay. Let's uh, comments from the board. I'll go. Yep. I like the door. I think it's appropriate given the, the buildings that are here. There's all different kinds of doors. Some have 15 lights, some have nine lights, some have no light. Um, in terms of the red, we can say what red we want and having it turn white, I think is perfectly acceptable. So we could roll it all together. All right, very good. Diane? Yep. You're on board, Abby? Yes. Steven? Motion to approve through staff with the green fan painted white and either, do we have a preference on color for door? What is the other red called? There's cottage red and I can't remember. It's, it's called the barn red, red, which is yeah, is it's called it's a dark is it like a little darker? It's called Nantucket red for some reason. Cottage red is lighter. Yeah. And the barn red has a little more orangey. Would, would everybody be happy They're if it simply said yeah. uh one uh, a red within the approvable palette? Yes. yes. All right. That's That's my motion. Motion. That. Bruce that. Yep. Thank is you, that you Stephen? Yep. Okay, that was Stephen's motion. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, very good. Thank you. Um, Thank you very much, now sir. it is. Pete's been here for a while. What? 10 minute break. Oh my goodness. 10 minute break? Yeah. Everybody good? All right. Ben, you Sorry, Ben. 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 No. He didn't get up. He didn't even get up. He he knew. Knew. Yeah. yeah. He knew. Through. So, Brad, I goove it. You guys going to go get some pizza? Yes, definitely. All right.
Uh, are we, are we going back to Hickory Meadow? Um, we can. I, I think this. What? Oh, is that why you're here? Yeah. Here in case there's any questions I can help answer. Oh, okay. Well, so. Okay. No, I would just jump on that. Which one of what are we doing? Uh, the hickory meadow. Oh. <clears throat> Hickory meadow. Uh, Scott? Okay. So your board is Abby, Diane, Dal. And myself. Harry's not here. So you have a four person board versus a five person board. Um, your options now that you've flown here are to proceed. And you can have the person who is not here ask through staff for them to read back in. And that gives you a fifth member. May or may not affect the outcome of things, <clears throat> but just so you're aware of the process. Okay. Um, uh, Holly, do we have anyone in the queue, uh, butters wise? That you know, of. Um, I asked because we had several letters, so not that you know. Um, let's see, why don't we start with the uh site plan? And so, I'll just a hair, and then Scott, if you could uh describe to us what you're proposing versus what we saw last time. And then I would like to look at the pictures that were um, previously presented by bus staff, Billy Saad, and then we'll go from there. <clears throat> oh, no. Okay, oh, I, I uh, I'm there. Scott Fritz, representatives for Six Street Meadow Lane, and I'm a landscape architect. So uh, what we've done since the last presentation, we resubmitted with a, a with setting the as requ requested, set the fence back um, at at the gate. It's, do you have a, can you, yeah, that, that gives a better idea of the proposal. So before the, the fence was right up to the road and up to the property line. So on the property line to the east, we set the, the, the fence back three feet so that there's allowable for a solid hedge along the property line and then in the front it's set back uh at the where the proposed gates are it's set back 25 feet and at the other quarter it's set back 15 feet from the property line with dense planting that would reflect the planting that's across the street and down the road as well so native plantings that will be deer tolerant or hopefully deer tolerant um, so that you have a complete buffer along the six hickory meadow lane. Okay. Any other comments you'd like to make at this point? Not mm -hmm. at this point, but okay. I'll let you go ahead and- So if it's good with you guys, I'm gonna have Billy just walk us through the pictures that he took and then we can ask questions and then we can go from there. All right, again, Billy Saad, land use specialist for the record. So I was acting on a complaint that was called in in January, um, complaining about this fence. It's an as-built fence. There was no approval when it originally went up. So I drove over there and I took photos. I recently went, went back over there to take photos to kind of give you context of the neighborhood because as you scroll down those photos, you'll see it perspective from two hickory, four hickory, up to six, and then down to the end of the road and looking back. As you approach six, it's it's very visual, and you know it's the the style of fence. I've I've never seen approved by the HDC. It, it kind of mimics. It looks like a garden fence, really, and it's a very large property. Uh, to have a fence that sort of defines the perimeter of a property that's approaching eighty thousand square feet 
it kind of goes it goes against building with Nantucket in mind. There's a I think it's page 131 of building with Nantucket in mind that discourages boundary fences. Um, also, that stepped header it, it goes all the way around the property. It just makes for a really busy design. I mean, if if you guys are looking to approve this, I definitely I would I would suggest getting that header in line because it just it 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 sort of it's all over the place. And if you scroll back down through those pictures, you'll see there's at least seven or eight drops in one run. So it just, it creates kind of a, a little bit of a funky design there. Okay. Thank you. That fence is being pulled back. So you will no longer see it. Okay, Scott, let's hold on just to, just to okay. make, we're going to get a chance to talk. Okay. Have plenty of time. Um, questions from you guys, or do you want to go right to comments? Go to, we have to say, you want to go, you want to start? Go ahead. A, a fence surrounding a whole property is very rarely used in this town or out of town, Johnson or Madigan. The gates, the doors they are, are heavy black metal with signs on them. So you catch them and they say, please shut the door at the end of the day. I mean, this is supposed to be a private property. Why would you have such a site? Why do can you I, have? Can I interrupt? Please? What you're Scott, talking about Scott, is Scott, 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 Scott. It's not this property. Okay. okay. Hold on a second. Then okay. just a point okay. of order Go ahead. to clarify a point as opposed to what typically happens if someone feels like they're being interrupted. Okay. Point of order indicates that there's something going on that might have some relevance. So okay. you're making a point of order. You're stipulating, you're, you're saying that this, the gate that's being discussed is not part of this property. We'll get back okay, to that fine. and determine that as part of our discussion. Right. But if it's not part of his property, that's fine. But in the picture that I've got, it says pros new fence setback. It's still totally visible. And we don't do that. It's not a fence that has posts every three feet and then the fill in for deer. It has the the top on it, which goes up and down. I don't know why. Here is another one with the arrow going up. Add dense to screen. Add dense planting to screen fence. If if they have a place where they want to keep the deer out, there are many other solutions that that do not involve fencing the entire property which has been mentioned that it is not part of building with Nantucket line. And this catches your eye. It's a, the streets become very popular, really. It's not sort of a dead end driveway type of road. And it is not what should, should be there. They use the old kind of deer fence, with the posts and the and the black uh, grading on it, but not that is so visible. And as you drive up the road, you see it. You drive around. You go around the back of the of the uh, NISA. You see it. It is. It needs to be redone and pulled in to an area that is fencing off. What they're trying to grow to stop the deer from coming. Not the whole property. That's that's it. Fair enough. Thank you. Um, we'd like to go. How about you, Abby? Yeah, sure. Um, well, I think the wood stands out and I think the height is is too high. I mean, I don't think that. Here, I mean, it looks what what is the height of that fence? About 11 feet, 10 feet. The height is uh seven feet six inches to seven feet. Okay, because it looks higher than that. This okay. fence is on an on the neighbor's property. I'm, I'm not it's sorry. I'm, okay. Let me just finish. Um sure. I'm talking about the wood fence um where you have it at the driveway. The other thing is it appears that in some locations the fence is right on 
the property like front line, like right at if if we go could go to the photograph that has the right there, that does not appear to have a lot of um you know a place where you could add vegetation to obscure that. That looks extremely high. I mean, but um maybe maybe yeah I'm um, did you put it up so you you know it's seven six? It's seven six, yeah. Okay. It was put so, up by a contractor. Yeah, so I'm not opposed to um, putting up a fence to keep your the deer out of your. But I think the material at the height, um, and it would have to be screened so that it it blends into the rest of the neighborhood. I think that would be more successful. Thank you. Thank you. Can I interject or I have to wait till everyone? Yeah, just just wait, because let's okay. get some of the pent out pent up energy out of this. <laughs> okay. And we'll come back to what you're out of. You can revisit what you're proposing and how it addresses those elements. <clears throat> um Val. I really don't have a whole lot that hasn't been said, pushing it back for sure. Um and along the sides, it looks like it's also on the property line. And I would hope that that would get pushed in as well so that there would be screening on the neighbor side, not inside of the fence of the owner. Um, and natural planting is, yeah, the best. Okay. Uh, can we go back to the, go to an image that shows the fence itself? Like that's a side, I think. Yeah, from I think that's from four or six. Eight, I one of them. Yes. Four and six. Okay. So uh I agree uh the wood stands out. The height at seven six. Can we go back up a couple of slides to um oh this one is fine. So seven foot six as it may be seven, seven foot uh seven foot six, seven, <laughs> six foot and so on. Um, part of the issue is it takes on this architectural uh, mm -hmm. artistic, but it's really not artistic uh, with the tiered approach. Um, but part of the issue with the height is that it's on a, an area that's relative to the street, at least a foot taller. So all of a sudden you've got an eight foot six fence. So I think that needs to be taken into consideration. <laughs> Certainly if you're a deer on the outside jumping up in the shells, if it were the location where this was, um, it should be considered as part of the height. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sitting on this, obviously, but this deer fence thing comes up all the time. And a solution that, uh, I'm an architect, uh, solution that we've used is if you put up a four foot high fence and the posts continue up and you run a wire, a dark wire at eight feet, the deer can't jump between the top of the fence without hitting their heads on the wire. And so they don't jump. Um, just a suggestion. That's all. Okay. So that's a good suggestion. I've seen it work. And um, they only do it once. <laughs> they do it once um, and get a haircut. Yeah, The distance from the property line is problematic and that it doesn't provide uh, for proper buffering from the neighbors. I think as the HCC will come to say more and more often, the fence cannot be an offense. So I think that's what we're focused on here. So why don't you tell us what you're proposing that will address that, those concerns. Okay. Um, so on this particular photo, we're planning on pushing the, the fence back where the arrow is so that the fence would not be in forward of where the street is. To, so from the left to that arrow, the from from there to there, that whole thing becomes a buffer between the the street and the and the road and the fence. So if you look at the the planting on the left, it's completely solid plant. You know, it's a native planting, and it would be, be more. And they're going to plant fully plant that area between where the fence is and where the street is. So that whole area would become a buffer. And then addressing the issue on the, the other side where you can see the fence coming in, that is set back. Adrian, let's go to the site. The, the one with the plant materials. Yeah, that one. Oh, not that one. 
So that one I want to get to in a minute. Um, the site plan. Yeah. Okay, so the, the property line to the left, there is a three foot buffer that we that can be planted with a row of right now there is planting, solid planting along there. So the, the fence would flip back three feet and it would be completely covered by the existing planting. And there was a photo earlier with viburnums that showed the viburnums with the existing fence and you cannot see the fence at all. Um, can we go to that photo and then we'll come back to this site plan? It's a photo with the, right there. <laughs> that's a photo where, that's a three foot buffer between those shells and the fence behind it. Okay. And this is actually the, the fence on the property? That is their existing. Okay, just so we understand. Okay, back to the site plan, please. All right, and Scott, can you tell us as, um, what's proposed on the right hand side as you're looking at the plan and at the, uh, so the west and the south? Can we scroll up a little bit? So the property, as my understanding is it's entirely fenced. Yeah. So, so on the right, on those other two lines. Yeah. On the right hand side, there is, it's a, a planting buffer between the, the property line. And uh, so it's fully planted on the right-hand side. You can't see the fence. On the left-hand side, from in the front, from the where you see where it says fence, there's a, there the neighbors have a hedge that goes across the front that meets in and then goes back. And then at that point, there the fence is sandwiched within the planting, so you cannot see that fence going back. And You're then on the on the Left side of the on the left hand side and on the right hand side, it's just all completely buffered planning. On the right hand side, it is uh, a combination of what Mirica, um, um, cherries, and and viburnums dent. So you can't you cannot see it. Then on the back hand side, on the rear of the property that faces Westchester Street. The upper part of the fence is not visible until it comes down to the corner in the back. And there is a 10 foot area that can be planted. And that's shown in the one photograph where the, if you scroll forward, you can see the back area. Uh, can you direct us to the picture? And then I've got- Yeah, if you one. keep scrolling, we'll- Oh, right. Yeah, there's the- Back one more, I believe, um, or maybe the other way. And this is or is not your gate. That is that is eleven Hickory Meadow. So will Diane? This is eleven. Yeah, those are those are all eleven. Yeah. Can you go back yeah. to the? I think it's that one. Yeah, it's that one right there. So the fence, it's completely non-visible in the upper hand because of up toward the what is that the veterinarian's office, that area, the fence is completely not visible. It's when you get down toward the corner, there's probably 20 feet that has, there's no planting at all. And that would be proposed to be completely planted with viburnums, um, mirica, um, and hollies as well to, you know, to create a solid planting. And Scott, that. what's the spacing between your vertical posts? Six feet or eight? It's those, that's eight, eight to eight to nine feet between them, depending. Okay, and then just uh, then get a, when Jesse, want to ask a question, give me one second. Can we go back to six, four and six? You want just a hair, yeah. Um, the one that's labeled four six. <clears throat> so Scott, you had said from the side it's not visible. So I'm a little the, concerned because this the is the other side. Okay, so four or six is this is the side you're gonna eight, put behind. Eight eight, it's not visible, but six it is visible. Okay. Okay, um, Jesse has a comment and then we can have some additional discussion, please. 
I was just back to the, the back property line on the Westchester side. Uh, if we can get to the photo. There, um, oh, the Westchester side, the, the back property line. Yes. Right there. there. Yeah. So, right. there, where you're proposing to plant, that's town owned land, if I'm not mistaken. And furthermore, yeah, it, in, in this situation, you might be better off lowering your fence because there's you know because if the your the gear is not going to be able to jump uh due to the slope um you know like eight feet so you could you could definitely lower that as well um but i don't i don't know about planting on that big berm that's talent land it could it if we we could push the fence back at that point yeah well We'll, we'll address that. That's, that's, okay. Thank, that's a good point, Jesse. Thank you. Um, okay, so Steve, I have a oh, public comment real ben, quick. Please. Is that all right? Um, so um, uh, ben, just ben, ben Norman, uh, a citizen, um, it, number eight, Hickory Meadow are clients of mine. So I, I um, but they have not asked me to speak. So this is my own opinion or my own observation. It appears to me that the the fence has been put on the property line between six and eight. And so the screening that they, that they are saying is going to obscure it is actually owned by eight Hickory Meadow um, and not to um, dry dirty laundry, but um, the fence did require some cutting along the property line that wasn't all contained onto six Hickory Meadow, if I'm saying mm -hmm. that correctly. So um, there is concern about between six and eight that they're using property that's not theirs to screen it. So I'm just going to put that out there. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, before we go further, I just want to bring up the gate to this property. Has that been approved? Or is that part of this application? It's part of the application. Okay, so let's not lose. There's no gate there at the moment. But There's you one shown in post. the drawing. Yes, in the drawing, but it, it's not an as Steve, if I can yeah, add to this, ahead. there is no gate there currently. It's basically like a section of the fence is, I guess, movable for them, or at least that's what I that's what I sort of pulled from it when I when I have been by there the few times. So I believe they're proposing this gate. It's not it's not currently there. Okay, and then with respect to the gate materials, Scott, what I I don't see it like a specification for it can you explain there, to us the, what it is you're proposing yeah on the original submittal there's a drawing and the gate is it's cedar uh, it is or natural it's, water yeah it's it's similar to any other gate in Nantucket but it's it's tall versus not tall we had talked about doing a at the cattle grates like the there are two of the neighbors that are uh driveways that come right up into that area and there is there are cattle grates there and the client the homeowner didn't want to do that because it's it's very difficult to walk over so that's why we came up with the solution of doing a taller taller gate so cattle grates what if you're not he's referring to not the gate itself but there is a um the grates yeah the there are um, pipes with maybe six inches between, so that I guess it for cattle it deters them from. They only do it once. They're like yeah. a deer. Yeah. Okay. So you're talking about a cedar natural to weather, I presume, seven foot six gate. Correct. Okay. Just so we have everything on the table. Which would look like on on Westchester Street, there is a a, a gate. It it goes very tall, but it also goes at an angle, so it's not that height, but it is. The same construction and same materials. Okay, great. Thank you. So we're going to have a discussion now amongst ourselves, and then we're going to figure out what we're going to do. Can I attempt to summarize where I think we are based on your comments and we can go from there? Fair enough. So we don't want the fence to be visible. We don't want it to be any taller than it needs to be. Um, there's some strategies to reduce the height. Uh, we don't want it uh, planted. We don't want it installed such that the buffer is using the neighbor's vegetation mm -hmm. and um i think that's that's good primarily it. and the gate is one thing we haven't discussed so and primarily we don't want to completely fence in the property okay 
because that's in building with then second in mind as colleague. It says it says so and this is so empathy, I don't know. I I look back and forth and see if I can see what their proposal was. Why a contractor would build something without having a a thing to say you could go ahead. Mm -hmm. Most contractors here know that they have to have something from us to say so. And I can't find anything in their application about this particular fit. So I I am sort of surprised because it's a huge construction item and it covers however many 50,000 square feet or whatever it was. Uh, and I have a feeling from the letters that we've gotten and, and the few telephone calls that there was not much conversation <laughs> between neighbors. Mm -hmm. And I, again, you brought this up earlier on another item that once you start to do this, maybe another person comes up and they do that. And all of a sudden, every property in that area is is fenced off and it destroys the whole thing about that yard, which, which is one yard flows in to the other. And that's what we go about when we do short fences and driveway openings and stuff, even in our low cost housing. The two good ones all have a a mixture of houses that flow from one to the other that aren't saying this is all mine. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important. We're trying so hard to keep Nantucket somewhat what it was that to do this in this particular place with this much visibility is not what I think the best solution is. Okay. Thank you, Diane. I appreciate that. So, um, do we have particular thoughts on the gate? And then um, we'll see if we can move this to some type of a motion. It's more with some specifics. Um, the proposed gate? Yeah. I, I, I think that that's fine. I think it's appropriate. What's what the, the drawing that was the drawing? Yeah, submitted seems appropriate to me. Okay. Uh, Diane, yeah, can you go to the yeah. How tall is it? Seven foot six. The fence is the gate. The gate is. Can we get their hands through? Mm -hmm. I'll take that as a no. <laughs> Val, what's that? Uh, thoughts on the gate, just so we can get some more stuff out on the table and move forward after that. I think it's a little big. Is is the seven feet the post or the actual? Um, seven foot six, I take it, Scott, is the top of the fence, so That's the gate will be the same. I think it would be like seven feet. Yeah, natural to weather. Mm -hmm. Um, Phil. Well, is it natural to weather? Yeah. yeah. It is the least of my concerns. <laughs> yeah. um, my thoughts are the gate should be shorter. I do think the idea of um, a gate with the wire on top is appropriate. And I understand the concerns about deer containment and having a barrier for them. But absolutely, this type of fencing shouldn't be visible. It does become a defining character. And um, where is the brush that naturally lines these areas is more appropriate, much more appropriate. Um, Should I try? Uh, yeah. thing I, I have another oh. comment, though. Go ahead. And then before you motion, I just want to give it this some direction in terms of the procedure we laid out. Go ahead, Val. I think I've been trying to identify exactly about this, what is really bugging me. And it's it's like a frame what you know there's a board that's laying on the dirt it's it's like a wall that hasn't been filled in yet so 
I'm not sure that that's appropriate. Right, because typically what it is is it's a post with a with wire, and that's it. Post to post wire makes the fence. Right, and there isn't a typically a fence. Right, um, that would go a long way. Did you want to add something? Well, uh, I'm just going to suggest maybe it's it's not maybe it's not a wood fence. Maybe it's that the typical metal that you see that sort of disappears mesh. into the yeah metal with mesh. A wire mesh fence. Yeah. Um, Dan, then before we get a motion, I just want to be clear. So what we set up because we didn't have uh, responsiveness uh, was a compliance deadline. It was two parts. One is that they would get uh, material direction. Uh, from us by the next week and then by I don't remember the exact date but the July would have brought this to the point that we could approve it so um, I just want to make sure we're clear to the applicant what changes need to be made so that we can observe that because it, frankly I think it's a good pattern uh, for us to take when we have these as builds that are controversial is to set up a couple of two part deadlines because otherwise they'll linger for months, if not years. Um, so, having said that, yeah. so yeah, so I would say that the, the materials it should be different, it shouldn't be the wood frame, um, the height is too high, and maybe to raise idea of making it five feet with a wire above might be a good idea. And back from the property line, so it's on your own property with vegetation um, screening that new fence. And that the gate itself comes down to five feet. That's um, mm -hmm. um, Can we have a second just for discussion? I'll second it. Okay, so let's have this question. Go ahead. I just, I still think we have not considered enclosing the whole area in one continuing fence. I think it's somebody should read it in building the fence. I can remind, I think you said what page 101 that we did. And he was actually correct. Right. Thank you, Billy. Exactly. No, what we we wow. totally believe him. Um, I think <laughs> Diane, for me, the idea here is one. I agree with you. Two, with the deer and the nature of the kind of like it's out in town, never in a sense where it scrubs, where it's scrubbed. So if you have a, a fence that isn't as tall and it's going to be put in by the vegetation to create that barrier from the from the animals. I'm less concerned, and I'm not taking away from your point, but I'm less concerned about it as opposed to, say, your um, uh, like Bassett Road or your someplace where we have, you know, you're going down Paltis Road and you can see expansive yard space. And if someone were to, were to come in and, and suggest putting up a five foot fence that went where there's slip rail now. And then down the property line and around the back, and it's visible to the extent that it is. That's for me, that's where I'm drawing a distinction. So, I'm not taking away from your point, but I think that that's kind of the consensus I'm getting from the other members. They're not ignoring your point, it's just that there's some kind of countervailing uh, factors here. One, it's not in an area that's open to view, so you don't see the fence, well, unless it's seven foot six. And right on the road, and two, um, you know, it's in my scrub, and two, it's it's for the enemy barrier versus someone just establishing their property. So again, not to take away from your point, but I didn't want it to be unaddressed. It didn't seem fair. Oh, okay. I I wonder just for a suggestion, <laughs> if anybody has seen Billy Cassidy's on the other side of the vet hospital, mm -hmm. going down there, he has. Llamas mm -hmm. and stuff out in open field and horses. And he hasn't got a fence except in the yard that is around where his barn is. And it worked. And it was good that the deer didn't go in the deep as 
property, they were going to eat if they they wouldn't have. They they lived here a lot longer than any of us. You know those llamas are pretty tough though. Yeah, <laughs> but you can't, you can't make that a stipulation. I'm not, not making a stipulation. I'm saying <laughs> look and you you could bun the llama and get good good yarn. I've done a word search of building an advocate and I have never seen one. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Okay. Well, so, can you see actually if that's what we're talking about? Yeah, I, I, well, I kind of would like to see just if we could spend two more minutes on this. Thing. So we have some type of consensus of what we want. Because at the next meeting, we need to approve it. Yeah. So, um, okay. the post with the wire mesh, we've had a discussion about five foot post with wire or seven foot six. Uh, that was, I guess, the gate. Let me back up. Um, on the post with wire mesh, is there any uh, appetite for the shorter post with wire mesh and then post with a wire across the top? I can't see that. Five, so five feet and then the wire. It's a, a seven. So a five and five and two. So it'll be five foot wire mesh at two foot. Yes, wire. but they can get their body through. Right. So yeah. they'll be less than. What about the, what do you call it? The top of the lady that's. No, that's going to go away, right? That's going to go away, right? There. Yeah, so it'll be just a post with a five-foot wire mesh, and it could even be a seven-foot post, but if it's five-foot the wire mesh talks, and at seven feet, that will wire. Right. And no? No no framing left, or just right. a post, not wood post. Um, the gate would be the same, five-foot. Slats and a and a wire at seven or seven six. Mm -hmm. So when I say seven 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 six, okay. um, within the property a minimum of five feet, eight feet, ten feet Back on, on the, the side in the rear. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ten, mm -hmm. seven to ten feet. <laughs> well, I mean, it would they have let you have planting that would. That pushed out so it didn't end up in the in the road. Yeah, we just don't want to see it. So yeah, vegetated out, maybe five feet back in the road. Okay, and then um, except for minor, you know, yeah. like absolutely tiny visibility, the post is what they want to yeah. not to be visible not, from the thin metal. Right, right. but uh, not to be visible from thicker metal. Right. Abby's okay. saying metal and we're saying wood, so we have to suss that out. Yeah. Oh, 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 sorry, sorry, no, sorry. No, no. Okay. Sorry, I wonder, you're saying I was saying for the entire fence that it could we could have the metal, which I think disappears into the metal post. Yeah, yeah, metal post. Gotcha. Okay. So metal post. So is there anyone adverse to that? If it's just the post painted invisible green? Right. Yeah. No, even the black goes black away. Looks better, actually. And they they off the wood that it isn't to be stained. Well, no, the weather. So it so it weathers. Okay. So um, metal or wood posts, uh, seven to seven foot six wire mesh to five feet. Um, a wire at the termination of the post. It's strung between them. Uh, the gate to be um, five foot with a wire. Five foot with a wire above can be slat. And within the property uh, on the um, sides and rear, a minimum of seven to 10 feet for, with plant buffering. And at the front, as you go to the plan, please. <coughs> and we're good with it at the front there where he said yeah where he's showing it if that's on their property yeah we don't know looking at the picture yeah can i speak yeah please okay so uh, come property. to the mic scott so they can pick it up <laughs> in the front at hickory meadow lane the property line is actually on the other side of the road the the um the the street itself is an easement. Part, it's an easement okay. through the property. So yeah. what 
the way it's shown now, the the road is probably I think it's like 15 feet. It'll be 15 feet from the traveled way. And then then you have the planting is set back um 15 feet at the corner, then up toward the gate, it's more, but that becomes solid, like basically dense planting that you would see, you know, on the country road here. And okay. then along the then along the side where we have it set back three feet now. What is I just want to be so is it what is the what are you requiring for that or requesting for um, proposal? Seven to ten or five to ten. In the front? On the side and the rear. Oh. I thought it was think. Well, I said seven to ten first, but are we good with that or is five to ten? Okay. I think five. I think five is too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so five to ten for buffering. Okay, so that was discussion on your motion. Do you want to make that your motion, and then I'll write it up later? And subject to the motion. Okay. Um, subject. That's to my terms. motion to hold for revision, subject to what uh, we've written down here, and uh, that's my motion. Okay, so all in favor of Abby's motion, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that carries. Scott Staff will have a write up on that, or you can just look at them. Okay, them I have online. one question on. On the fence, if it if if it goes down to a five foot fence with the extensions going up on top, what I've seen are the four by four wood posts with rebar going up, and it it seems dangerous to have the rebar there. Yeah, is there? I mean, that, so I don't know if there's an uh, an alternative. No, there. I mean, <laughs> Ray mentioned it. You could either go with the, the tall post. It can be either wood or you already have um there there is you, a neighbor that has the five foot with the wooden post with the rebar on top and right no so we're going to back off on the rebar just for a second yeah. okay go ahead. Um, we're we're not suggesting the actual design elements a metal post if you want to use something other than rebar mm -hmm. um you know we need to see it in the in what you propose sure, sure. but uh you could have a, a one inch uh <clears throat> post it could be a, a, a metal iron post threaded into a collar, then the collar is screwed <laughs> into the top of the post. You could drill it a foot and drop a foot of it in. I mean, there's a variety of ways you can do it. But if you're not, if you're concerned about the safety, then obviously you want to put metal that's going to have a cap that's either can be fastened to it or it comes with it to begin with, okay. or it can be rounded off. Got it. And then if could be kept as seven feet if the top rails were removed and just have the wire between the posts but also remove the bottom rail yes okay yeah you could just use what's there the rails are there Cut it off there, level there are parts on the fence where the deer if a deer gets in there they they'll go whatever way they can to get out so they push under and push the fence up well let, let's just let's, let's i mean that's, yeah, yeah. Well, we can, you, I mean, it's, so you need a it's vinyl coated wire. And that's what's yeah. there now. They, 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 and they push it is on a deer, though. They can get onto there. So you can, so you could bear it. You can anchor that. There's a variety of ways you can do it. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't mean to be. No. Okay. Well, we made our motion. Yeah. That'll be up to you. Okay. You're making the big bucks on this one, and um, we'll uh, we're going to move on to the next one. Okay. 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 Any questions? Okay. Run them through staff. Where do I get the um, well, if you want to have them available as soon as leaving the meeting for the plane ride home and you can jot them down, you can yeah. watch us on YouTube. Um, it's a lot of fun. See if they got popcorn on the plane. And then uh, if not, you can catch it there. Otherwise, it'll be today's Tuesday, probably Friday. It, lasted, it took like two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So totally yeah. yeah, we just we're, we're such a busy historic district that's okay. just one of the ways it rolls i suggest look at the meeting look at the um look at the tape i'll, I'll be here so i can go by the office okay sounds good thank you all right ray had to leave he's really not feeling well okay i'm sorry to hear that let's um give me a moment then to gather we backed up for hickory ben's here for three yeah. Ben, why don't you start with the main house move and additions? Sure. So you're only going to hear from me briefly here because uh, uh, Mickey is actually going to um, 
present this one for you, but um, I am involved in this project. Um, I'm helping Mickey with the design and drafting, the application uh, the research. So if there are questions throughout, Mickey doesn't know the answer, I'm here as well. Um, and with that, I'll just hand it over to Mickey. Okay, sounds good. Mickey? Yes, thank you. So a few things involved with, with this project. One is being um, added onto in the rear, some alterations to the rear of the house. And as you can see on the site plane there, it's being moved off the property line. Currently it's about 10 inches from the easterly property line. So they're moving it so that they can improve the foundation and put a small addition to the side and not infringe on setbacks and fire codes. Um, so if you scroll, um, I don't know, up or down, there's maybe up, you'll see if some historic photos of the building, just to give you a little history. Uh, that's the current situation in the back. That's the current front. <clears throat> Same. The west side. And this was original in 1925, probably the year that it was built. And the one above this is a front view of the front of the house to show the, the original building before the additions were put onto the west or the east side. So the drawings will show um, the proposed changes. There you go. The roof walk is, is proposed now, but you actually approved a roof walk on this several years ago and it was never built. So we're reapplying for it. Um, no changes really to the, besides the roof walk, no changes to the front of the building facing Pogovit Lane. Um, the west side on that drawing faces Jefferson. You'll between cottages on Jefferson, that's pretty dense along that road, you might get a glimpse of this side, but for the most part, it's not terribly visible. Um, the, you can see the existing profile, the small um, box to the left, it's, it kind of sweeps pretty low to the, in the back. And the um, proposal was to add a little bit more room to the back of the house to get a larger family room. The, the head height was, Dysfunctional, you couldn't really get doors in the back. So we proposed a gable, a hipped gable um, running off the back, which you'll see on the next elevation right there to the right. <clears throat> so that's it's hipped. Um, we're keeping with the same sort of context of having the windows go literally um, wrap around like a like an enclosed porch. So they go kind of corner to corner. It's a lot of glazing, but that's kind of what was there now. And this this view really doesn't face um, it. It doesn't face anything. It faces within the lot to the rear cottage. Um, there's a change to the dormer on the upper left of the rear elevation that was previously a small um, kind of like an overhanging sleeping porch, and that's being enlarged for a bathroom. And on the east elevation, um, you will. You don't see a lot of this because the neighbor's building is really quite close to this, but that changed a little bit too. You can see the old profiles that um, the drawing reveals in red. So that's it for this cottage. Okay, thank you, Holly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Mickey, and thank you for the photographs. Uh, I recognize one in particular. <laughs> um, it, it shown, looking at the, the history of, of Brant Point. Um, so uh, I agree with Mickey. Um, there's an HCC survey on file. Um, says circa 1920, a uh, historic photograph showing 1925. It's awesome. Appreciate the scale and using the existing character defining features like the 12 over 12 windows. Um, I was uh, a little skeptical on the roof walk addition. Um, I didn't think it was appropriate for this dwelling. However, um, if there's been a previous approval, I'd love to see that and have that with the file. I think I don't want to speak for the board, but I think they would want to also see that as well. Um, it might, you know, reflect some memory there too. Um, the change to the floating, I guess is what I'm going to call it, second floor dormer is odd now um, with the two windows. They seem to be floating in a sea of shingles. And would you mind going to the rear? Right there. Yep. So you can see 
here, this seems to be kind of floating there. Um, whereas the other ones are very, they're, they're, they're tight and there's no, um, shingle area. I would recommend, um, obviously this changes because of the uh, additional square footage needed, um, to make it similar to the existing rear dormers, um, with less shingles. So those are my comments, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. Um, do we have any abutters? Any members of the public? Mickey, do you have any comment? No, I'm sorry. Um, who would like to, any questions from you guys? Steve, you want to excuse me, Steve. Actually, we do have HSAG comments. Okay. <laughs> um, is ben, uh, ben can't represent them. Well, I, I can represent them. I uh, was... Well, hold on. Hold on, Mickey. It, it would, I mean, there's no like law against it because you're not really a member of a, of a group. I thought I printed them and brought them with me, but I didn't. All right, so Mickey, I'll read them off. Okay. One exception. Uh, main house, rear bathroom dormer might be improved by filling the wall with corner to corner windows, similar to the other dormers. Okay, that was it for this one, the main house. Yeah. Okay, um, Jesse, uh, Mickey, your board is gonna be Val, Diane, Abby, myself, and Jesse, and that will be the board for the all of these three, four, three applications. Uh, we'd like to begin. I, I can start because I didn't have any concerns. Okay. Diane? I think, I think Mickey's uh, suggestion of making that left hand dormer fit the window or the window fit the dormer. So it, it's, it just calls more attention to itself being so different from the other two and it's such a nice little put together house and I'd like to see it sort of emulate the, the what garage doors down below it. Um, that's all. Okay, thank you. Val. Um, I, I have sort of a suggestion maybe for that to run a, a, a board under the sill around to sort of allude back to it being a filled in porch. Um, that might help We're making it seem sill. like it's not floating, like a band, yeah, like you know? Show the sill running around it. Yeah. Okay. Um, but overall, I, I did not have any concerns. I believe Mickey, it was approved once the roof walked, but it would be good to just see it. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Jesse. Yeah, I'm um, saying, thinking uh, most of this is, uh, if not all, you know, improvement. Um, and uh, as Holly mentioned, I think uh, a previous approval to um, um, <clears throat> uh, walk would be uh, appreciated. Can I ask? Yep, Abby. Um, on the roof walk, that middle um, post in the <clears throat> dormer there, is that, is there any way we could just move that out of there or is that, does that tie into a structural member? Yes, structural. You, if, if you move the post, it'll, it'll kind of throw off the symmetry of the roof walk. Right, but, to, but I'm reading that correctly, Mickey, that it comes right through the dormer there? Yes, and I'm looking at it myself, and I think the post is probably going to be a little shorter than it's indicated um, because it's sitting on the dormer. Right. Um, but that probably doesn't alleviate your concerns. I, it's, it's um, yeah, it's just the... To move the roof walks side to side, it'll throw off the symmetry from the front. And this being the back of the building, where it's really quite, I mean, quite a bit less visible, it didn't seem to be a big concern the where, where it was. So, okay. Um, Abby, does that at least answer your, mm -hmm. okay. But, but I think Holly said something. Yeah. Uh, well, let's push the front now. I'm wondering if moving it over, 
moved it over so it's not on that middle. Sorry, I'm not. Um, no, yeah. I, I, so if, to saying. kind of mitigate what mm -hmm. what Abby's saying, if you see up here, maybe it moving the whole unit this way. So that way it's not on the dormer, because if you look at the front elevation, it's going to be more symmetrical to yeah, if, if that's Mickey's possible, point. I, I would that's what I would do if it were. I believe I got that right. Did I get that right? Or is I opposite? And then are it was. You, are you suggesting moving the whole entire roof walk or I just kinda... the post? No, I kind of like to walk. go before we horse. Sorry. Okay. That's all. Because uh, my concerns about the roof walk are that it's too large. Okay. Um, it's larger than our one third of a roof ridge by a considerable amount, at least three feet. So the reason I want to mention that is because if we're talking about moving it, it will have an effect on how the hatch works on the north elevation if it's not as wide as it's currently proposed. Um, on the north elevation, also, I, I, I think that the comment that Val made is appropriate. I think the other, uh, I would definitely want you to be cognizant of the roof break line and how that's how that uh, band is perceived from the ground. Um, just so that it, if it's possible, it, it's harmonious. It doesn't create kind of an odd um, perception. And then the other thing is, is I think would be appropriate with that dormer is to try and create a sense of proportion on that's similar to the hipped porch on the lower right so that you know you've got a window to wall ratio left to right uh proportion and then you have a height above the the shingle line proportion and that, that those are two proportions that exist on the structure so if somehow you were at least giving a nod towards those, I think it would be a little more harmonious. It won't stand out as much. So those are my comments. Um, do we want to hold for revisions? Yes, shall I make a motion to hold for revisions? Yes, please. Um, I do make on minor. Diane's motion, all in favor say aye. Is that for aye. 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 Um, nope. We're going to do the uh, uh, garage. Is, uh, Mickey, that's garage house. It's a guest cottage in the back. Sorry, I'm used to cheap sheds and you never know what's coming. A cabana house. Okay, once uh, once you get the site planned up, why don't you go yeah. ahead? And... Just to give a little more history to this, why don't you scroll up to that old photograph? That was from the 1989 survey. And it's it doesn't look like this at the moment. Um, that was the original cottage um, to the right, which was my grandmother's when she um, used to rent out the main house. She would stay there. I added this little addition to the left, um, and then in 19, uh, 2009, um, you can scroll down now to the original, the existing photos. The um, I had I moved my office building, which used to be on Commercial Wharf. To the to into the to that back of the cottage and connected it. So now what you're looking at is the original living room of my grandmother's cottage um, without the addition that I put on that moved elsewhere on the island. And um, the bigger structure to the right is my previous office building. So this is the back view of it. Um, and I guess that's it for photographs. <laughs> so in the site plan, you'll see that it's being um, reconfigured we're keeping proposing to keep the living room and we're moving the entire uh, structure to the right toward the easterly property line and then if looking at the elevations you'll see the front view in the kind of the upper left there that'll face <clears throat> that'll face pog out of lane but it's really facing the back of the big house the original um structure the 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 small piece to the left is the original cottage main living room. It's got a fireplace in it in the front door. And the piece to the right is still my old office building, but it's being modified to um, kind of break up the details to get them into a little bit smaller scale. You see on the west elevation to the right, um, the, the gable is actually being um, kind of cut off on the front to give it more of a salt box look but it's got a front porch added to it to, to um, create the porch and to, um, you know, lower the, 
the roof lines a little bit. And then the, the gable above is really there to, to, to give headroom. The, the um, height in the second floor ceiling area is really low. So the, the added gable provides just enough space to get a, a couple small bedrooms up there. The lower left elevation faces the back of the property to the neighbors. It's somewhat visible from Jefferson Avenue. It is at an angle. And then the view to the right, the east elevation, is really probably not visible at all. You, um, it's facing a neighbor's house and toward the harbor. There's no like roadway that's accessible to see that side of the building. Um, I guess that's it. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Mickey. Holly? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so yes, there's an HGT survey on file, um, 1930. I want to notate that without that additional information that Mickey mentioned from that 89 photo, um, we wouldn't have known <laughs> the, the history of that addition that was added on to it. Um, so again, this is why obviously updating our surveys is, is important. Um, so appreciate giving us that additional information. Um, and as well as addressing the first question I had was how was this uh, building being moved and reoriented? It wasn't clear for the way I was looking at it on the site plan from the existing uh, footprint. So um, I understand now that it's being moved to the right um, to the property line. Uh, the existing windows are 12 over 12, which match the main home. Uh, I think the addition should retain that. Um, the second floor flush dormers. Um, are seem a little overcomplicated for the simple cottage, um, but I understand the reason for wanting those. Um, the architecture could be uh, mimicked from the main house and uh, in, in what we was just reviewed. Uh, the on the front, which I believe that's the south elevation, um, it, it looks like, and I get it now that the one story addition is the original 1930, um, which was your grandmother's. But it, it, it now it's competing with the the double French or the French doors next door. Um, should notate that those should be twelve light with a kick panel, which I think would also relate back to the main home. Um, and then the north shed dormer over here, which I think you said it might not be visible, but I think it's an odd configuration and it looks like it's missing a window. Uh, so those are my comments, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Holly, and um, the. Historic structures group would like to say that the slider could be replaced by a single door and a window and consider using 1212 to match the big house, which I believe they mean is the main house. Um, who would like to comment first? Somebody? Diane. Um, I agree. I agree on the south elevation making those. French doors into one with with a kick panel. Um, I don't mind the rest of it. I think it would be good for the windows to go back to what they're supposed to be. The twelve oh twelve, they're busier, but it, the windows are such a part of the of the house. It would be good to have them go that way. And I see the, the reason for moving the uh, little east elevation. So I, I'm pretty good with it. Okay, thank you, Diane. Uh, so um, so I, I, this one is more concerning than the other one, even though it's in the back, but um, because I'm missing that old simplicity of that simple house. Um, and uh, and and all, you know, uh, the large expanse of roof just makes it so simple and 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 really sort of elegant. Um, I think we're missing that in this design. Um, I think the French doors are competing with that original door. I don't know whether those could be windows or, you know, get rid of the original door or, um, but they're, I think they're kind of competing. Um, and 
Lastly, I think the, I, I love the idea of having an owl chimney, but I would add a little height to it. It looks a little squat and uh, it, you know, usually those are a little taller, like historically. Yeah, yeah, me like exist. Oh, oh, I thought you were. Um, well, I thought you were. Uh, that was redrawn. So forget that remark. Um, I think what's what when I say that we're missing the simplicity, I, I think it has a lot to do with that dormer over the French doors, and and I and I don't know how to fix it and make it simpler. I don't mind the new um, little slightly rocket ship because that's such a iconic sort of elevation of a Nantucket house but it's I think it's the dormer that's throwing me up that's all I have thanks okay thank you Abby Bell um the windows aren't 12 over 12 they're six over nine existing so I wouldn't make them go to 12 over 12 to match the house um and understanding what Abby's saying, uh, I just have a suggestion to maybe make that porch roof die into the eave. I was thinking that too. And make a make that dormer a little shed with a six light. You can still get the head height over the toilet, and it's just a little more simple. And make the doors below one, as some, was suggested. Um, other than that, that's all I have. Can you repeat your comment on the dormer? So I'm saying take the the roof of the porch and run it into like a broke back. Right. So that on the front, it gives that same sweep of roof. Oh. And then make this a little shed dormer with just a six light. I think I know what you're saying, Val. I think that's that's a that's a good suggestion. And that gives you that same feeling that the front of the house has now. Yeah, simpler. Okay, thanks, um, Val. Jesse. Um, yeah, I mean that that, that I'm, I'm good with what Val just said. Plus the kick plates, but then we were going with one door, so I don't know if we need kick plates or not. Don't have French doors, and then just. I mean, overall, I think it's uh, a, you know a nice addition to the, the, the little building there. Um, and I would there's a couple of things on the north elevation, on the second floor, dormer to the right. If that window could be centered, um, that may look better. And not if it's not visible, or even it's more of just a suggestion. And then maybe some another window on the east elevation for just to even out that administration there. But huh? that's it. Okay, thank you. So, Mickey, uh, my comments are a um, little concerned about proximity to setback, but it is not um, atypical in that area. The South French doors agree, compete for attention. The dormer over, um, I don't disagree. That would help to simplify the solution that Val had meant, mentioned. Six over nine, I'm good with. Um, the north elevation, the dormer and the gable there are very complicated. However, um, this comment about that, that being a complicated dorm, dormer and all my other comments are mitigated by the lack of visibility of the structure. So um, it seems like you've got a few things to do, um, relatively minor, to get an approval. Is that something we want to do? on an exhibit? I don't mind bringing revisions. We're going to do the big house too. Okay, you, you want to do the revisions, Mickey? Mo motion to hold for revisions. Okay. All right, we'll move on. To, uh, all in favor of Abby's motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Mm -hmm. Okay. Escape. More hardscape. We're going to do the hardscape. Yeah. Well, as soon as um, Adrian pulls it up, we'll... Mickey, when you get your site plan, go for it. So the hardscape is basically, I mean, the, the, it involves moving both the structures, which you just, um, I guess you'll deal with 
when they come back as revisions. Um, the driveway, of course, is moving with the structure to the uh, to the west a little bit. So it's it's really no change in the, the appearance on the front of the property. <clears throat> it's a shell drive now. There's a stone wall running along the side of it, retaining part of the lawn. That's all. That whole system is just going to move to the left, um, and the house will move closer to the road. In the back um, is a stone terrace connecting the two um, cottages to create some outdoor space. Um, and then um, there's a couple of short, um, <clears throat> roughly three foot or less pick, uh, type two picket fences on, e on either side of the house um, toward the back behind the garage on the left and <clears throat> equally so on the right. Um, that's really it for proposed landscape changes. Okay, thank you, Holly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so I note that this site is, um, it's close to the AE8, but it's mostly in the 2% chance of flood. Um, and I'm bringing, reason why I bring that up is due to its proximity to the beach and flood prone area. Um, I wouldn't recommend a full out impervious stone patio, but maybe more of a pervious surface. Um, and also I note that there's no details, um, in the application as far as the retaining wall details, the fence, the gate and the patio. So that would be helpful for a hardscape plan. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Holly. Um, a uh, question, Mickey, I, I, I don't want to presume, but it seems since you didn't include descriptions and you know, noted to relocate those items that you're, you're basically just relocating the retaining wall is not going to change. It's going to be the same materials and so on. Is that Correct. Right? All, it's all matching existing. It's just moving. Okay. Thank you. Um, your group had no concern. Your the, uh, historic structures group had no concerns on the hardscaping. Correct. I'd like to um, I can. Jesse. I have no concerns. Um, the patio, which is the biggest part, is not going to be viewable from any public way. Okay. I'm, I'm assuming the elevation on the wall is the same as it was before. So. Thank you, Val. Um, I agree with Jesse. Just maybe add to the file so we have it what the stone patio material is going to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. Abby? And what, what did Holly say about the, the what? saying where the gate is and just pointing out the fence. Through you, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Um, I was just pointing out that there was no details of those. Understanding oh, now oh, that there's part of the application. Typically we see a detail of the fence and okay. the, yeah. Just, just maybe meant. just to add that to the application. Okay, Diane. I'm good with it too. So um, it sounds like a motion to include uh, at least a narrative description of the gate and the um, hardscape materials, um, including that they're going to be like kind. And um, that would be, do we, that's my motion. We can do that through staff. Yeah. But do we need to do it through staff? Can we just have them put it in? Yes. Because, okay. Yeah. So we'll do it through staff. Okay. Um, that's Abby's motion. Yes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that carries. All right, Mickey, you're all done. Thank you. For now. Thank you. Um, Abby, would you write that one up? Thank you. So we're going to move on now to one steamboat wharf. Is Michael Bentley here with us? Michael? I don't see anybody here for that one, Mr. Chair. Okay. I'm going to skip Michael and we're going to go to 90 Ill Point. And Ethan is here. Well, Ethan, when you see your site plan up, you can get started. Okay. Uh, good evening. Ethan Griffin, behalf of the applicant. Uh, actually, I believe that uh, Kitty Potchman from the Linda Loring Nature Foundation is also on Zoom. Um, if you guys have any questions, particular to uh, what they're trying to do out there. Um, essentially, this is an application uh, to demolish an existing house. Uh, the cottage and shed were approved on consent, um, but this one, I suppose the board wanted a little bit more explanation. 
Um, the removal of these cottages uh, is part of a larger master plan for the foundation to restore this sort of habitat along the bank. Um, they are in pretty rough condition uh, and the sort of configuration and the size of them really don't make them good candidates to move. Uh, you can't see in this photo, but actually the roof on one of the pieces has collapsed. So they're just kind of uh, in, in disrepair. Um, and again, as part of their master plan, um, they'd like to remove this and all structures from this area. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Holly. Thank you. Um, I didn't see a date of this structure. I, I know this wouldn't be in an area where uh, or we would have an, an, an 8089 HDC survey on file. Um, so in that regard, I, I usually you go uh, with the tax assessor's information, although I don't like doing that 100%, but that's what's consistent with what we have on our NHL. Um, and I believe that said 1970. So um, with that, it would be nice to know a little bit more information before this is uh, proposed for demolition. I'd hate to see um, just photographs and no additional information. So those are my comments, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Ali. Um, just for clarity, what additional information are you suggesting? Well, it would be nice to know, is this, um, since this was this property was associated with Linda Loring, you know, was this here prior to her um, purchase of the property? Does it, you know, predate, predate her? Was it something that her and her family built? I think that information is, is you know, germane to um, what, I understand Linda Loring's, um, you know, background and and all that and what they've done for our natural resources on on Antarctica, especially the side of the uh, of the island. But again, I think that's a germane to understanding um, their whole property. Okay, thanks for the clarification, Ethan. Can you speak to that at all, or the member? Who's sure, on? a little bit, and then perhaps you know, Kitty can offer some additional insight um, from our research. You know, we poured through just the various. Um, things that we look at from uh, sort of photo archives and sandbore maps, things like that. We couldn't find anything that um, said that it was any earlier or, or later than the, what the assessor said, which I believe was the 70s. From the looks of the style of construction, I would solidly put it there. Um, it's got some sort of interesting contemporary features and giant sort of plate glass windows, which would be sort of typical of, of that era, probably not something that the board would typically approve these days. Um, but uh, I don't really have anything in addition. There are, I think we did, yeah, some photos as part of the application so you can kind of get a sense of um, the overall aesthetics. Yeah, can we scroll down just one more sheet? Would it be possible just, was this on a view? Because I know, I didn't, don't remember seeing it. You wouldn't be able to see it. Yeah. Could we, could we make it? I, it's not actually from visible from a public way. Yeah, it's, it's. I actually so, didn't even know it existed, and I spent a lot of time out there. So, exactly. Yeah. How do we know which? Uh, Abby has a question. I'm just addressing. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Um, I'm I'm concerned because, uh, you know, if we're going to demo it, I'd really like to know, um, its history. And and I, I mean, for me personally, I'd like to be in front of that building and make make my own determination de decision as to because you know uh, anyway that that that's my view okay thank you <clears throat> Val yeah so I reviewed this as part of the pack that I was reviewing and I would have put it on consent except there was no history at all not even 1970 so I questioned that but um the building itself I have no concerns about getting rid of it Okay. There's none of it that anybody would want to re use. No, it's it's those boxes, the way they're configured and with that sort of broken back. I, I don't know that there's going to be an economical way to get them out of there, quite okay. frankly. And it's it's two by four walls. Um, it's largely cathedral on the inside too, which is not going to really lend itself to uh sort of removing easily. Okay. And then I want to clarify something, and then we'll go to Diane and then Connie. Um, as a house, it will be subject to the demo move off town bylaw so it has to be noted it has to be noticed in the newspaper if someone's interested in it, so on and so forth diane uh i knew linda very well but in boston before we the public turned up here the house has been there for at least 50 years she lived in it added here and there 
as she came along so she could see the hunters better. But <laughs> uh, and vitamin for tea. No, <laughs> not live that. So if if it is demoed or whatever, I think that we should give some crate and some plaque or something rather that says that who who the area belonged to and and technically still does whoever and that um that she's done you know a great deal for Nantucket. I think that's Im important to put the location down or other um a house in town it is there too but mm -hmm. she loves this house she loves this house okay thank you Diane appreciate that Connie? Yeah, I I have no concerns with the demo move off. It does look a little bit dilapidated. Okay. And then Jesse wanted to come up. Yeah. So I I I lived in that little shed. <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah, I, I worked uh, as her caretaker or whatever on the property 25 years ago. Um and the house definitely is 1970s built, but the shed, as Linda told me, was the old pump house. For the cranberry bog, right? Ah, uh, so, so that's a cranberry bog right there. It used to be at one point in time, or apparently that's what Linda told me. Oh, huh. interesting. So that's a little bit of history there. Okay. So, um, you were here. Her house. Yeah. <laughs> the banana boy. Oh, no, no. I heard the stories. I heard the who stories. needed hunters. Oh. She had house boys. Um, on the topic itself, I think. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to see what can be reused, reused. The uh, town bylaw will help to cover that. I agree with Diane. I think that, you know, obviously it's the Linda Loring Foundation and we we all get that. But if there's something that could be um, some type of a, I don't know, I would call it a monument, but just something indicative, whether it's in the file or on the site, whether it's a, a granite, small granite stone with a little etch of the, of the, um, a perspective view that you had the orthographic whatever it is something along those lines i think would be beneficial and helping to move this along in a, in a responsible way um and other than that i don't have any additional comments do you want to respond ethan yeah i mean i think the foundation would love to sort of acknowledge that that is the place the site you know of where she lived for many years and enjoyed um i think that would be something they'd sort of additional company. information for the file oh additional information for the file uh, if, if we can yeah if we'll we'll do another round of research and and see if we can dig something up i think you've got a couple of people you can interview um val had her hand up and then um abby can you uh give us some interior pictures just for the file I uh, actually, yeah, I can, um, I have some that I took with the camera sort of up against the glass. I wasn't able to go in the, the roof is partially collapsed in one section. So it's a little, but yeah, I can get in there and give you some interior photos Just for archives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. I mean, it's, it's all cathedral. I mean, it's pretty spectacular. Mm -hmm. Must've been really something, but. So we're at photos, narrative history, and some type of a, a memorialization concept. Abby, you wanted to speak? Yeah. Is, is there, is there one structure on there that we could preserve as part of that memorial i mean just one like the pump house you said there was a pump house it would be nice just to keep one small part of it that's i mean that's an excellent point i i'm not as aware of how that sort of works back into the habitat restoration of that whole bank i, I mean it's something right now where everything is within like 20 feet of the water so it all kind of has to I mean, go you know wanted this herself that was part you know the foundation when right you're saying she wanted to have this preservation right not necessarily the house but the preservation of, right. the, of the habitat and the, the, the property so um is that concept there would be uh perhaps that to the extent possible the pump shed would be relocated to somewhere on the property yeah that and that would be the structure so that's already been consent yeah. The one that Jesse slept in. I didn't know that when I put it on consent. You're, you're, so what we're calling the so for the purposes of the application, what we're calling the shed is the structure. It's a cinder block structure on the northwest side of the lot. It's kind of a garage, I guess, in a way. 
it's sort of embedded uh if you keep going oh, up that's the one i was that up was there uh that's the that's what we're calling the cottage as yeah. the uh oh, okay because i went can we go to the perspective it literally had a, like a glass the, the water went right underneath it, it. yes I the water goes underneath it i thought you were referring to this small structure um the problem with that cmu structure is due to its shape it's going to be difficult to pick up and relocate but the, the cottage is not CMU, other than the foundation so ethan can you go back the one near the water the one near the water is, is a cottage it's that l-shaped structure yeah. um or i guess r lowercase r if we're looking at it this way um so that's so, the cottage and that's constructed of what no so that's wood frame construction okay. that's that's and jesse which one did you sleep in that's the one <laughs> okay yeah. And we are not going to have a plaque for Jesse though. In because this was apparently some type of a pump. Going up. You can see the water. Go, see, right. You can even see where the water right. it, it went right up underneath. And there's a glass right. floor right there. It's a big pump house, is yeah. all I'm getting at. Yeah, and I had a kitchen. You know, um, I, I was thinking that we were talking about when you said the shed, that it was like a modest, you know, small structure. No, I, I, I'm, I'm saying the if there's just one, with everything. one structure that, that you could say, it would be nice to put the plaque on and have it so to memorialized. Per, perhaps to the extent that a portion of a structure can be saved and worked into the master plan is that something that works to the extent right? I, I i couldn't commit that that is 100 percent going to happen as part of this application but i think there's every intent if there was some way to sort of preserve it move a piece off and it was some you know some way to pay homage to what was there i think the foundation would be interested in that again i couldn't commit 100 percent to say that that could effectively happen. Okay. Mr. So Mr. go Mr. ahead, Holly, and then Thank we're gonna you. wrap up. I just wanted to make the note of 1970 and the fact that we had an active historic district commission, right? 1955. And then 1970, 71 is when the entire island became. So this structure could have been um, built when the entire island was a local district and in a time frame where we did not have design guidelines. And I think it's really important to acknowledge that. Um, that this that's why we see some funky things where a lot of people come in and say, are you wouldn't allow me to build that today? Um, I just think it's good to just acknowledge that period of, of history. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah. And, you know, just with caution, too, that's not there's a kind of a different standard for significant historical structures, structures that make that tend to lend to fabric structures that don't. Um, so I think where we are is additional information, images, interior um historical narrative including um you know perhaps whether this was approved previously or not um and so on you know holly's made some really good points on those topics um to the extent uh reasonable to retain a portion of of one of the structures um and what else was there some type of a memorialization. Yes. Yeah. And we'd leave, you know, we're not, you know, pinning you down to that, but we're going to include it in the motion. This is approval through staff with these items. That yeah. Were, okay. I will subject to, I'm just, I'm trying to determine consensus of my members. This is what I'm reading from everyone's comments. And Connie, I'm so sorry. No. Okay. You You're just on this may side. may have some information available with Johnny McLaughlin. Because he keeps every old record, and he was on the board in 1970, and he may be able to at least look up the notes or whatever that would then. Okay, so under under historical narrative, parenthetic phrase, give a call to Diane and John. <laughs> okay. I'm old. But... Well, that's not what I said. Um, and to extend a uh, reasonable retain some portion of the structural is there anyone who would like to change or is that really where we are consensus wise yeah. okay um do we have a motion motion to approve with all of those things okay through I, staff yeah definitely so holly can take a look at that the historical information um all in favor of bail's motion say aye aye, aye. any opposed um, you know? Yes. Okay. So uh, four with and Abby's a no. And I'll write that one up. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ethan. Uh, let's see. 63, number 1163 Halbert. 
number 12 and number 13, 63 Halbert, and number 14, 10 Lincoln, are going to hold over till next week. So we're at um, commissioner items for discussion and vote. Val, do you want to talk to Unsaver Sound or Ray, do you want to wait for Ray? Before he left, if I could wait until the beginning of Tuesday's meeting. Okay, so we'll hold so that. Um, yeah. Why don't we move that to Tuesday, the beginning of the meeting? Adrian, just a note for Esme. It'll be under the same uh, commissioner's items for discussion and vote. But can it be at the beginning of Yeah, the yeah, meeting? we'll okay. do it at the beginning. Okay. Uh, number numero, nu, uh, numero uno, uh, Thursday HTC meetings to be removed from the meeting schedule for the foreseeable future. Great. Um, uh, but who, any concerns about terminating Thursday meetings for the foreseeable future? No. Any hoorays? But many. Okay. Later. What happens if something comes up and Linda Williams has 15 things and you want to put it on Thursday? Do we have to re go through the whole? We can just vote let, on let, it. Well, wait, let's just, yeah, good point. Uh, topic is uh, no regular Thursday meetings yeah. for yeah. the foreseeable future. Yeah, Mr. Okay. Chair. That's good. I do have a hand raised. Okay. From um, an attendee, I'm going to bring over to panelists. Okay. Okay. And who is it? Joseph. You have to unmute. Marino. Hello. Thank you. This is Joe Marino regarding Richmond Breakpoint to Gregor and Ave. I I'm sorry. Could you repeat that, Joe? Yes, regarding to Greglin Ave, Richmond. Uh, okay, hold, 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 Joe, just for a minute here. I want to orient myself. We're that's not something we're discussing at the moment, but you're here, so I just want to understand. It was on consent. Uh, that was on consent, and which means that it was voted in a, a group to be approved as submitted. Oh, terrific! Thank okay, you. thank you very much. You can touch base with staff in a couple of weeks to get the COA. I appreciate that. All right. So back to the middle of our motion. No regular Thursday meetings for the foreseeable future. That is correct. Your, your motion, Abby? That's my motion. All in favor of Abby's motion, say aye. 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 Uh, Jesse, you're on that. Aye. And um, approved minutes. We got a motion to approve April 25th, 27th, May 9th, 23rd, 25th. Okay. Any objections? I didn't read them, but you want to abstain? You can <laughs> sure. abstain. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Connie, you're on this one. Uh, on Abby's motion, all in favor say aye. Aye. Abstentions? Val? Oh, yeah. And I'm an abstention. <laughs> okay, so uh, we've got minutes to review for our next meeting uh, the 30th of May, June 6th, and 8th. Our next meeting is June 27th. It'll be hybrid in person here at Four Fairgrounds and on Zoom. And do we want to get into future action items? No, because they're future action items. We'll probably want to change that, Adrian, to uh, potential topics of discussion. And um, John McLaughlin? Oh, motion to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, that's, that's it.